Jason White, coupled with the legs of Adrian Peterson, have the folks of Norman thinking Orange Bowl. But the Sooners need look no further than last year's conference title game for reassurance that an undefeated regular season means little to a hungry, overlooked opponent. Prior to the start of the year, the spotlight on the Colorado football program was for all the wrong reasons. But the Buffaloes have let their play on the field speak volumes. And as the victories accumulated, the spotlight reappeared. This time, for what was taking place on the field. The Big 12 title offers a bit of redemption for both. And both will stop at nothing to get what they've been striving for all season long. Ralphie and her Buffaloes thinking upset tonight in Kansas City. The third time in the last four years, they're the Big 12 North champions. But the task at hand is a tough one tonight. The Big 12 Dr. Pepper Championship has the Buffaloes from the North against the number two team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners, who need to win to earn a trip to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Welcome to Kansas City, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. This should be a good one tonight. We've got a great fast track, a beautiful night in Kansas City, and two teams that are hungry for a win. When you think about what went on today so far, really no major upsets. Virginia Tech, in their first season in the ACC, won the conference. They'll go into the BCS. So will Pittsburgh. A big win over South Florida today. USC had to hold on for dear life against their cross-town rivals, but they won it. Auburn right now in Atlanta is taking care of business on Tennessee at halftime, and we'll follow the California Southern Miss game as we go tonight, though that one doesn't have Orange Bowl implications like this one does. My partner, as always, is Bob Greasy. And partner, last year we watched this game from afar and, and watched the Heisman Trophy winner, Jason White. They get out, they get a touchdown right away, and then they get thumped by Kansas State. They know tonight, unlike last year, they can't afford to slip up. they got to win this game to go to the Orange Bowl. Well, they've learned from that, and they've also been more balanced. Last year, they didn't have balance on offense. Now they have a running game, and they've got balance. That's the key. They've got the Heisman Trophy winner coming back, but he's got help this year. But again, Jason's putting up great numbers. He is. Jason White, the quarterback. Bob Stoops told us the other day, his sixth year, this is his best team. And his quarterback is playing his best football of all the years he's been here. But he's got a little help now. He's got a guy in the backfield <laughs> that's not too bad. By the way, nice head. Yeah, partner. thank you. Adrian Peterson, an outstanding freshman, true freshman running back, has come in and just lit it up. You know, he's probably going to be in the running for the Heisman Trophy as a first-year player. But now he's got balance. you got running. you got passing. They've got the whole enchilada. Well, at Colorado, they had off-field problems last winter and spring. Gary Barnett was on administrative leave for about four months. He didn't even know if he'd be the coach. Now he's coach of the year in the conference. Here they come in. North champions again. Do they have a chance, though? Most people say they don't. Well, Gary Barnett is telling his team, and listen, it's, it, it, they're 11-0, and 0, we're 7-4, and 4, but this is not a beauty contest. 7-4 and 4 can win this ball game. All we have to go is do, go out and, and execute. We got special teams. They, they, they're better on special teams and get some turnovers, and they can win this ball game. And they're going to have to get good play out of their quarterback, and Klatt in the last three weeks or four weeks has played pretty well. Joel Klatt played great against Oklahoma last year. This year it's been up and down, but he has played well of late, and he's going to have to play well tonight for them to win. Well, for Colorado this year, they kind of rallied around this team. They said, let's go shoulder to shoulder and see if we can win the North title. They have. They're here with a chance for an upset. But the team they're taking, knowing that they've got a win to go to Miami and the Orange Bowl, possibly to meet USC, are the number two Sooners of Oklahoma. And their fans are here in full force. A victory probably puts them in Miami against USC if something strange doesn't happen. And they've been in this game for the last five years. Last year they got rattled. They don't want that to happen tonight. Lynn Swan will join us on the field, and then we'll kick it off in Kansas City when we come back. The two teams just about ready, and the third man and our team's ready on the sideline. Here's Lynn Swan. Swan. Thank you, Brad. There's a lot of talent that's going to be on this team, some of the, on this field, some of the best talent in the country. A lot of that's just a no. Well, I'll tell you, this game falls down to three things. Attitude, redemption, and respect. Last year, Oklahoma came into this ball game expecting to win, undefeated, going to the Sugar Bowl to play for a national championship, and they were thumped by Kansas State. As Jason White said, we stunk out the joint. 
Coach Barnett brings Colorado down from the Big 12 North. Everyone says the winner of the Big 12 North is a sacrificial lamb to Oklahoma. But hey, it's about respect. And Barnett said, we don't have the best team in the country. There's a lot of talent in the other team. But what we have to do here today is be the best team for the next three hours. That's what it boils down to. What we see on this field point-wise, what we see on this field intensity will be all about the attitude, gaining respect, and redemption. This is a game with a lot of baggage, boys, and both teams want to unload tonight. Brad? All right, Swanee. Colorado on the toss and deferred. So Oklahoma will be getting their hands on the football first. It's a perfect night for football. And it could be at this time of year a lot worse than 50 and clear and cool. It'll cool a little more as we go, but it's a pretty night in Kansas City. He's got it teed up, and his kick is deep, and it will not be returnable. And that's one of the things Bob talked about. The special teams of Colorado are very special. Those two kickers are something that could come into play very easily tonight. So Jason White. Will he be a back-to-back -back Heisman winner? He's the only guy that's a current player that's got a vote, but he said, I'd never vote for myself. <laughs> he won it last year, yeah. and his numbers this year, just as good. Not quite as many touchdown passes, but his touchdown-to-interception ratio is even better. So he'll bring out his troops at the 20-yard line. Adrian Peterson behind Runnels in the eye. And that's Moses, the tight end in motion on the first play of the ball game. And it's Adrian Peterson straight up the middle, and he got six, almost seven, for the freshman tailback. Time now for the Dr. Pepper starting lineups. And here's the big eaters up front. Jamal Brown's an All-American over there. Joseph Carter, Bush, and Sims. Adrian Peterson behind Runnels. You'll see that fullback lead the way, and he's got good hands, too. Bubba Moses, the tight end. Clayton's the big play wide receiver. You'll see a lot of Wilson Jones, Bradley, and Peoples as they continue to rotate guys through that core. A pickup of six on the opening play at second down and four. Clayton in motion. And the stretch to Peterson. Peterson's got a first down and down the sideline. And then he takes on one of the buff defenders and just rattles him out of bounds. Terrence Wheatley will get credit for the tackle, but he paid the price, a head-on collision, and a pickup of 18. Defensively for Colorado. Right, Manapuna, McChesney, and Gary across the front wall. McChesney's a good one there. Dizon's the newcomer of the year at linebacker. Washington and Ewe will join him. Secondary's been shuffled a little. Burl and Wheatley now in the corners. They move Sims from a corner back to safety with Tyrone Henderson. It's kind of a bend, don't break defense. They'll give up a lot of yardage, and then when they get back inside their own 20-yard line, they're the best in the conference. So Peterson has a great field position already, and now it's Jason White going up top. Just a short pass out to Mark Bradley, a pickup of about four. And Lorenzo Sims made the stop. Bradley becoming a big play receiver, but there's a lot of those guys wearing that color jersey tonight for OU. Well, as we introduced, five of the wide receivers have caught a lot of balls, and obviously they're going to play a lot. But they're going to catch a lot of balls tonight because Oklahoma defensively wants to take away one of the two things. They've decided to st try and stop the run and let the passing game hit the short and intermediate stuff. The only problem is they're a hundredth in the country against the pass. Yeah. All three wideouts the other way, but the comeback is to Peterson. He got almost to midfield. James Gary made the stop. There's a penalty marker on the play. John Bible's our referee. And it's going to go against Oklahoma. So that'll back him up to second down and about 11. Bob Stoops, what a job. Six years, 66 wins coming into this Illegal one. formation on the offense. Not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Third down. They had those three wide receivers out to the left side, and they didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage. And it'll bring up a third down. They declined the penalty, so third down and a long four. Peterson comes out. Peterson is not a good receiver. He's only caught three balls on the year, so normally in passing situations, he's out of there. And now Oklahoma with a third down coming up. Some confusion with their wideouts again. They're going to take a timeout and talk about it. We'll be right back. The Sooners have been in third down 167 times this year and 89 times. 53% is best 
in the country they've converted. They got a third and four here in their opening march. But those last two plays, Bob, they didn't look like they were organized yeah. in either case. I think they're just a little excited. You know, night game, a championship. They're one, they're one game away from the national championship game. Three wide outs and Keewan Jones makes it four. Empty backfield except Jason White in the shotgun. Jason, plenty of time, and open Bradley's got him first down, down to the 40, and they'll move the chains. Needed four, and they got 10. All five receivers went down past the first down markers and just did a little hook or a little out. White found the open guy. From behind the defense, you saw Clayton, number nine, he went down and kind of went out. Bradley was outside of him and just hooked inside for the first down. First down, Peterson back in as the tailback in the eye. And White appearing to be changing things up. He'll drop the throw. Plenty of time, deep for Bradley. Oh, Another nice. shot and had him. He had a step or two on Lorenzo Sims, and that would have been a touchdown. He had him big time, little play action. When you watch Jason White go back in here, watch him right there. He starts oh, to throw his foot, slides yeah. right forward. There's been some really bad weather here in Kansas City in weeks past. A lot of snow. Now, they've got one of the best ground crews in all of the NFL at Kansas City, but when Mother Nature drops a lot of snow on your field, there's nothing you can do about yep. it. And he did almost do a splits on that follow through. Now he throws it out, wide out screen out to Travis Wilson. Wilson broke one tackle and got inside the 35 near the 34. Ryan Ewu, the outside linebacker, stayed with him, tracked him down. Travis Wilson has had a couple of huge games this year. Played great against Kansas State. Had five catches for 88 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And did the same thing, almost six, six, exact same numbers against Kansas. Yeah. And yeah. his family's here. And Oklahoma's smart. They, they, they get the ball in the hands of the guys that can do something with it after he catches it. Wilson just taking that behind the line of scrimmage, a good run. This is already the eighth play of the OU drive. Adrian Peterson, first down and a lot more might be gone. Try to break a tackle, he's down to the 10. Tyrone Henderson saved a touchdown. Boy, does he get through that hole in a hurry. There's bursts and then there's bursts, Bob. He's got one. He does, and he got a bunch of help from the light from the right guard. 77. Watch Joseph as he comes across. And he's going to pick up a block right here. Look at the block there. That springs. I mean, that's I mean, anybody, any running back could run through that, but a guy as big and strong as Peterson, he doesn't need much help. 24 more yards down to the 10-yard line. Kiwan Jones inside handoff now. Kiwan. Gets inside the seven. James Gary made the stop from his defensive end spot. And it brings up second down and goal. Colorado defensively, you mentioned how they were 100 against the pass out of 117 teams in Division I. They're 93rd in the nation in total defense, but they've played better of late. But the one thing I mentioned that they have been good at is inside the 20. They're the best red zone defense in the Big 12. We'll see if that holds up here. Second and goal at the seven. White under center. It's Peterson. Cuts to the left. Back inside to the five. And it'll bring up third down and goal. Henderson, the safety, came in to help on the stop. So Oklahoma and Bob Stoops' team has done exactly what they wanted to do on this opening march. They've driven it all the way down to the Colorado five. They've used... Four minutes and change. Yeah. Adrian Peterson has 52 yards already on five carries. And they know what we know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we know that if this is a bend, don't break type of defense, you know, you sure they know, but they know they have to be patient and march the ball down the field. Again, five receivers for White. From the gun on third and goal. To the end zone, touchdown. Will Peoples, a four-yard touchdown pass, five-yard touchdown pass for Jason White. We talked to how many receivers they could go to and that they're all big play material, and Peoples is another one of them. Hartley, the freshman, in for the point after. 
the kick is up and good. Well, that's the way you make an opening statement at a Big 12 championship game. You march it all the way down the field. And on third down, you have your Heisman Trophy winning quarterback throw his 31st touchdown pass of the year. Oklahoma on the board first. Sooners lead 7-0. Now the Sooners took it the length of the field, and they are on the board already. 7-0. Jason White's 31st touchdown pass of the year. Will Peoples' second of the year, a five-yarder. And they're on the board first, and uh, Bob, they had some, had some third-down situations on that drive, and uh, they seem to be equal to the task. Yeah. We said they were best in the, well, in the country. They converted all three of them. Let's take a look. Watch, watch uh, White when he gets back. He's going to be looking this way, and that holds this safety. Watch what it does to the safety. It's going to open up. He's going to end up throwing the ball over to the right side. See how it holds the safety? Then he comes back, and the receiver just gets into the end zone. Five receivers out, three to the right side, and two. They picked up three first downs on that, that uh, drive. Jason White in the red zone. We talk about red zone defense. We were talking about Colorado's white red zone offense this year. 18 touchdown passes, no interceptions. It's, uh, that's, uh, that's perfect. That is perfect. Can't get much better than that. Garrett Hartley to kick. Robinson and Wheatley wait on it. It'll be Stefan Robinson about a yard deep. Good return, man. But he got leveled. The ball is loose. Big pile up. Well, the They're going to say he was down. Says it was down. But he did take a whack. Trying to unpile bodies. The referee was adamant, and so is the linesman, saying that it's Colorado ball, but let's take another look. Tony Cade's the guy that had yeah. him wrapped up. That, that ball was coming out. The ball was out before he, his knee hit the ground. The referee is behind the running back or the returner. So Colorado looks to have gotten a break there. Yeah. They're still inside their own 20, so they're not going to have the greatest field position to start their opening drive. Purify is going to be wrapped up for a yard loss. Jonathan Jackson made the stop. Joel Klatt, one of the captains, a junior, was in the minor leagues in baseball before coming back to football. Had a great season really last year. At times this year he struggled, even got pulled at one point in favor of James Cox. Well, he said that really helped him. He's come back now in the last month. He's played pretty well. Yeah, and he is a baseball player, so he can throw the ball and he can move around. Faces a second down at 11. Purify now empties the backfield. Platt's going to throw it out incomplete, intended for Vickers out of the backfield. The flag is down. And it's going to be roughing the passer, I think, on, Colo on uh, Oklahoma. It's roughing the passer, number 49 on the defense. 15 yards, first down. Jonathan Jackson, yeah. one of the defensive ends. Well, this team leads the conference in sacks, and one of the things that a defense... Well, that was really bad. Yeah. One of the things the defense wants to do is get after a quarterback early, hit him, knock him down, get him on the ground. Bob Stoops is saying yeah. ball smarts, ball says, smarts. Says use your head. Yeah. So that gives Colorado a lot better field to work with now to first down at the 32-yard line. by the backfield will get the call. Bobby Hurdles one man. Flags are down. We're going to have a holding, I think. There's a good run by Purify that would have netted them close to another first down. That flag thrown in the vicinity of holding, though. And that's the call. So just when they get a break with a penalty, they have one of their own go the other way. As we take a look at the Dr. Pepper starting lineups, the big eaters up front. Wilder's been around a long time. Barreau, Fenton, Daniels, and O'Neal. The front wall. Purify is their main man. Over a thousand yards rushing. Lawrence Vickers, they call him a V-back because it's a versatile spot. He'll get used a lot. Kloppenstein's a good tight end. And Mate and Mackey are the wide receivers to start with. We lost a yard on them. So they're going to back up the line of scrimmage to about the 22-yard line. And that's where it'll be first and 20. If you're just joining us, Oklahoma went 80 yards in 11 plays in about four and a half minutes and put it in the end zone to take the lead here. 
Colorado this is their opening March and so far they've had one good run negated by the holding call and the only positive yardage was with their quarterback getting decked from behind first and 20 now for the Buffalo Oklahoma fans and here comes Cody flying offside but was he pulled off by Wilder I think that might be the call looked like Wilder came out of his stance the snap. Ball start, 74 I was just going to say the louder the OU crowd got the longer it took Colorado and then Wilder yeah. came out of his stance yeah and he's one of the best uh, offensive linemen of that group he and Daniels the right guard but uh, you're right you know this is not a home game for either team so it's kind of a mixed crowd but I would say that the noise <laughs> is much louder for Oklahoma than it is for Colorado yeah I agree with you on that one they have the bigger contingent of fans here without it's not even close draw play purify somehow kept his balance got out across the 20 picked up about four Broadney Poole made the stop Oklahoma defensively let's look at their front wall the front four Jackson Pendleton Magruder and Dan Cody who's their top sack man Lance Mitchell back to full strength now at that middle linebacker spot with Ingram and Alexander Alexander will cause a lot of havoc Perkins back in there after the injury that kept him out four games with Nicholson Poole, Shelby and Marcus Walker's the guy they took a red shirt off of in the Texas A&M game there he is and they might want to pick on him or they'll try second down 21 they're looking that way and they threw incomplete they were throwing on Walker on a pass intended for Mackey and it was not a good throw and it brings up third down and long. Well, they were going after the true freshman. And Clatt just had to just threw this ball a little bit too early. He threw it way more to the inside of him. Clatt had some time. Could have moved around in the pocket. But, you know, young quarterback Clatt, he's probably a little jumpy, too. He, you know, he could have waited. Yep. Took that big hit from Jackson on the personal foul. On the roughing the passer and then Cody came flying around the next time so he's thinking about it back there and now he's in the shotgun on third and 21. And here they come and there he goes trying to get out of trouble and finds oh. an open man and missed him. Daddy. Ron Monte and he kept his footing and if he could have gotten it out there to him he may have gotten way down there for the first down sticks. I mean, they, they were chasing Joel Platt. I mean, I, I, I'm sure his eyes were as big as silver dollars. <laughs> but then when he got out and found some space, he saw a receiver down there. Monte could have just taken his time and got him the ball. So now it's a punting situation. Antonio Perkins back in there, and he's one of the best that's ever done it. As you saw those numbers, remarkable. Eight returns for touchdowns. John Tarp, the punter, is a good one, too, for the Buffaloes. Handles a high snap. Ooh, nice kick. Perkins way back at the 24. Perkins across the 35. Got about 12 yards on the return. And Oklahoma with a 7-0 lead has the ball back. They don't want what happened last year. They led 7-0 against Kansas State and then sort of lost focus. Bob Stoops said, don't worry about that tonight. They've kind of had a chip on their shoulder since last year and, and uh, that, uh, you know, that they didn't feel that they finished as, as well as they're capable of and, and you know, they're determined to, to try not to let that happen again. And of course, last year they got beat in this game and I don't think they ever recovered in the VCS title game against LSU. They're healthier this year, too, and they've got this guy running the football, Peterson. Two or three before they wrap him up and push him way back. Thaddeus Washington made the stop. They're going to give forward progress out to about the 39. So with guys like Jason White and Adrian Peterson in your backfield, you got to feel pretty comfortable if you're Oklahoma, the number two team in the country. And they know they've got to win this because at last report, Ella, uh, Auburn was beating Tennessee in Atlanta. And if you missed it before us in the second game of our triple header on ABC Sports today, USC survived UCLA. So top ranked USC, their season's over, the regular season unbeaten. That's what Oklahoma's trying to do here tonight as well. It's Peterson right side. A 
again, he's got that extra burst when it looks like everybody's running about the same speed as him. All of a sudden, he pops it out for 11 yards and a first down near midfield. 65 yards now for Peterson. 65 yards, and we've hardly gotten out of the first quarter. <laughs> Played half of a quarter, and Peterson is already halfway to 100 yards. And against the best teams when he plays the best. We saw him against Texas in the Red River shootout for 225. 249 is season high against Oklahoma State when they really had to have him. And then against Texas A&M, another 100-yard-plus game when he hurt his shoulder. Here's the throw to Bradley. And he's out of bounds. Another first down at the 38-yard line. So now they got a little bit of everything going on, Bob. Yeah, well, you know, the beneficiary... Both Jason White and the Peterson are the beneficiary of having that offensive line. Yeah. They're all five back from last year. The average 37 starts per man. That's remarkable. 37 starts per man. I mean, it's just, I mean, these guys have been around forever. Some of them have been playing since they've been freshmen. Now the shotgun, four wideouts. Kiwan Jones in there, and he'll get the call on the counter. Kiwan Jones. Down to the 30 and close to another first down. Sims brought him down. Kiwan says that's the way we do it. He was their leading rusher a year ago. Not quite a thousand yards, but he's a pretty versatile fella. Can catch it out of the backfield. And he'd be starting for a lot of teams if number 28 wasn't coming back in the huddle for and, him. And, and they, they come and go. They just they're a one-two punch. Uh, Kiwan is usually in there on most passing downs. And, uh, but Peterson and he split the downs sometimes on running downs also. So it's second down and a short two. As Bob said, Peterson's back in. Runnels, the fullback, is in motion. It's Peterson on the call. Adrian, first down, more breaking tackles down to the 21 yard line. Wheatley brings him down, but it's nine more. He was tackled. He's got a nice patience about him, too, for as talented as he is, he waits for his blockers. And the play was originally designed to go inside, and he just, like you say, gives them time to do their thing. And if it's not there, he just bounces to the outside. We'll watch his numbers all night long because most people feel he's one of the five that'll be in New York when the Heisman's announced. And he's 226 yards coming into the night, short of the single-season school record for rushing for Oklahoma. So that's a kind of a magical number we'll watch. First down. White back to throw. Going to the end zone. Got it, man. Touchdown, Mark Clayton. You get Peterson, Peterson, Kiwan Jones, and some more Peterson, and then you let your Heisman Trophy winner throw it 22 yards to one of the more dangerous receivers in the country. Two on the night here in the first quarter. Yeah, two drives, two touchdowns, two uh, passing touchdowns by Jason White. Mark Clayton, seventh of the year on the receiving end. The extra point up and good. And it's 14 to nothing. Perfect pass to an All-American receiver. Nice luxury to have, huh? The Heisman Trophy winner from a year ago, 14 nothing. All right, we told you they use a lot of five wide receivers. This time they use two tight ends. One's here and one here. But now what that does, it gets you two deep zones. Now, Clayton right here, he's just going to run an inside post to the post corner to the outside. He's going to get down past the first guy and then breaks it to the outside. Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator, the two drives they found, they were in that formation a couple of times, saw that they gave him too deep and figured out that we could do the post corner and get a touchdown. Last year, he caught 15 touchdowns. That was his seventh of the year. And so Oklahoma already up two scores. The kick's a good one. Robinson will take it about a yard deep. He fumbled the last one, though Colorado picked it up, and he took a pretty good whack again. Well, he's a little guy, too. Man, they are chewing that up on that kick return, that's for sure. So that's your matchup for Monday Night Football. From the 17, Colorado loses about three more. Larry Burdine. Now, Purify was slipping, but Larry made sure he was going to not get up. I think he hit Purify and tripped them, tripped them both up. 
This guy is the third guy in the rotation of the defensive ends. And yeah. he, he might end up being better than all of them when well, it's all said and done. That's true. You know, Burdine is a uh, just a sophomore. has seven sacks on the year. He's had uh, six sacks in the last three games. There's their leader, Cody. If you had a bunch of guys like him on defense, you could win a lot of ball games. A showing blitz right now in flat. Second down at 12. Joel getting pressure, got hammered as he threw. Lance Mitchell on the blitz, the middle linebacker. Well, you think something's going to happen tonight, Strange. Maybe it's going to happen. Southern Miss, they've got the early lead. 14 to nothing here. And a third and long, which you don't want to be in against the hungry Sooner defense. They're going to bring some heat again, it looks like, and they will. Platt in trouble. They've got a hold of him, and down he goes. Yeah, they love third downs. This Oklahoma defense really attacks. They lead the conference in sacks. They are like in a feeding frenzy when they get on third down. So Brent Venables, uh, co-defensive coordinator, as Bob said, they love third down. It's like sharks in the water at that time. Quarterback has got to see that coming and realize that you can't block it and either check out of it or throw the ball away quickly to one of your receivers. Now you've got to have your snap be perfect because your putter is back near his own end line just about. Talk. Well, he got another nice kick. Fair catch. And Perkins' own man ran into him and he one hops it. <laughs> Caught it anyway. I think Bradley ran into him. Bradley down there trying to give him a block. Yeah, he's he's going to say sorry, Antonio. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's still great field position, though, for Oklahoma. This is the ninth year of the Big 12 championship. But in eight of the previous games, there have been upsets. As you look back, Texas with the upset over number three, Nebraska in 96. A&M, a three-point winner over number one, Kansas State. Kansas State got shut out of everything just about BCS-wise in that strange occurrence. Colorado beat Texas, the number three team. And Kansas State last year, the one we talked about, was 35-7 to as Oklahoma was shocked. But they're certainly not playing that way tonight. They've already got a two-touchdown lead. Here's Peterson trying to break tackles, and he's going to lose almost two. Ryan Ewu. Kept stretching it out from his linebacker spot and finally brought him down. Well, this is great field position. If you're if you're a Colorado fan, I mean, awesome your defense has is, is given up two touchdowns, and now you, you have to stop them near the midfield. This is a time that something good has got to happen for Colorado. The offense needs something good. Defensively, you got to come up with a turnover. They've had turnovers to their credit that they've turned into points in their three-game winning streak to get to this point. They've got to have that happen tonight, too, or it could be a long night. Out of the shotgun, second and 12, play action, throw out to Clayton. Clayton puts a move to the inside and gets to the 50. And that'll bring up a third down and about seven. Another update. Well, there's a lot of football left tonight, isn't there? Yes, there is. Third down and seven now for Oklahoma. Third down hasn't been a problem for him so far tonight. White, plenty of time. Long ball to Bradley on the fly. Broke a tackle. Down to the 20, but there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Boy, that was a nice throw. It might all be coming back. A pickup of 30. And I haven't seen any preliminary call yet. They're looking for a nice offense. I don't know the players the line. Oh, that's the second time that's happened. And Bob Stoops doesn't agree with it. So it all comes back a 30-yard gain negated by a penalty that's happened twice on them tonight, a legal formation. Here's a look. Now, here's your five offensive linemen. Those guys are there, but these are the guys out here. One of those guys has to be on the line of scrimmage. Seven guys have to be on the line of scrimmage. These five, he's on the line. That's six. And one of those three out there to the top of the screen, they all think the, the inside guy is, but obviously he's not up for enough. There's Chuck Long, their offensive coordinator. You know, he's not happy with those two penalties either. Brings up third down and long now. Third and 12. White, plenty of time. Deep out to Bradley, wide open. Boy, just pitch and catch. Well, they got to get some pressure on the quarterback because Jason White's going to just tear him up. Just about every we replay we've had of Jason White throwing, there's not a white jersey in the picture. No, there isn't. And again, give credit to the offensive line. There is nobody near him. And these receivers just going down and just eating up this defensive backfield. 
Pick up a 20 on a third and 12. And a perfect throw by White. First down at the 35. And Bradley's just getting better week in and week out at wide receiver. Peterson straight up the middle. Close to the 25 is Adrian Peterson. Pick up a nine. The offensive line, three of those five guys made the made the all conference team. Carter, the center, and Brown were first team all conference, and Joseph, the guard, made second team. In fact, Jamal Brown, the right tackle, is an all American. Well, Adrian's on course for about 320 tonight. <laughs> nice first quarter anyway. Uh -huh. And a little over a minute to go. Second and short. Gets the call again. Stutter steps in the hole and gets a tough three yards for the first down. And Bob Stoops has told us, you know, he's flashy and he's fast. And he's got some nice moves in the open field. But I love those tough three and four yard runs he gets us. Those yeah. are the ones that impress me. Well, he is, they, you know, he's got a great combination. He is big. He is strong. And he is fast. He's 6'2", about 215. And he can run. Gonna get other, him. The other thing is he's hard, hard to bring down. Very hard to tackle. Hard to tackle. Not usually one guy is going to get him down. Kiwan Jones will come in right now to spell him. As Adrian will get a breather. First down Oklahoma though. They're back near that red zone area. At the 23 of Colorado. Already leading 14 to nothing. Penalty markers is Kiwan Jones is going to go down for a loss. Flags all over the field. Brandon Dabdu was the guy that made the stop but again a penalty marker with 29 seconds left in the quarter illegal formation 55 is not on the line of scrimmage six players on the line wow. three times in one quarter now they're going to have to start drawing lines all the way across there for those guys to all line up I guess and get seven up there <laughs> I know what's going through that mind right now <laughs> it's not a pretty sight <laughs> Oh. Well, guys, we were talking about the Colorado red zone defense. The last drive for Oklahoma obviously came from outside the red zone. It would seem to me look for them to go the end zone. If they're that good in the end zone, score before you get there. No, that's a good point. It's second down and 12, not first and 15. The penalty was declined because of the two yard loss on the play. And now it's. Going to bring up third down and long. Skiwan only got back to about the original line of scrimmage. And that is going to be the final play of the quarter. So for the Big 12 championship in Kansas City, all Oklahoma in the opening 15 minutes. The second ranks Sooners leading Colorado 14 to nothing. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew back in Kansas City. As Oklahoma in the first quarter, two long scoring drives, both capped by Jason White touchdowns. And on the eighth play of this drive, they've got third and 10, just outside the Colorado 20 again at the 22 yard line. They've converted every third down they've looked at so far in this ballgame. They haven't gotten pressure on the quarterback. They still haven't. He goes to the end zone. Touchdown! And it's Mark Clayton again. And I didn't think he could run that one down. 22-yard touchdown pass. Jason White's third of the night. Clayton second. This is the first time they went man to man. And whether it's zone or man to man, they just ate this up. The extra point coming up. Garrett Hartley for the point after. They're trying to make it 21 to nothing and does. And wow. Two 22 yard touchdown passes to Mark Clayton tonight. And three on the night. For Jason White. It's like shooting fish in a <laughs> barrel, huh? Yeah, it is. I said earlier it's pitch and catch. If they don't get pressure on Jason White, he might have a six touchdown night before look, it's over. Look at this. 
Just slides around, throws it to the outside. Look at this catch now. Whoa. What you really love about these receivers as a group, guys, is not only are they really good athletes, as we see here with Clayton stretching out for this ball, but they run some of the best routes as a group I've seen any team in college football this year. They're extraordinarily well disciplined. He knew where he wanted to go with that ball. I'll guarantee you they practice this move over and over again. Well, Jason Whitefellas only 9 of 10 for 106 yards and three touchdowns. I don't even remember the incompletion. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Bradley was open. He missed him. Yeah. <laughs> Bradley was the slot receiver there. Just runs down and runs to the corner. So Hartley's got it teed up again. Been a busy kicker already. We're only a play into the second quarter. This one should be returnable for Wheatley from the one. And boy, that kick coverage unit is getting better on every kick. Take a look at our first quarter statistics brought to you by Dr. Pepper. They're going to be a little lopsided. You can bet they will be. Well, they are. Everything, everything is lopsided. Time of possession is huge. Third down conversions. Yardage. <laughs> I mean, this is this is ugly for Colorado. And that's just the first quarter. That didn't so, include that, that last touchdown. And the last touchdown made him five for five as Bob said on third down conversions. Colorado's got to muster something pretty soon here now. Here a five. That's not it. Lawrence Damp here with a loss of three. As we check in, he's watching this one. He's hoping some people change their mind about his horns or have a better opinion of what they already have. But right now, the team, the only team to beat him this year, Oklahoma leads Colorado by 21. Here's a quick slant complete. And Evan Judge is out across the 20 to about the 22. Garen Allen on the stop defensively. It's the long play of the night so far for Colorado, 10-yard pickup. Judge missed last week with a viral infection. He's back playing, but uh, Colorado, three possessions, all inside their 20-yard line is where they're starting. That was one of their positive ones, the 10 yard gain. Most of them have been no gain or negative yardage. And now a third down that they'd certainly like to pick up to try to get some kind of momentum going. And the whistles are blowing here, and I don't think the Oklahoma defense hurt them. And it's going to be a penalty on Colorado. The problem is Joel Klatt had to pay a heavy price. Ball starts 76 on the offense. Five yards, third down. Edwin Harris in the tackle he is the guy with the penalty. It'll bring up third down and eight now. <laughs> yeah, but he, so you, you take the play back and run it over, but still the pain from the yeah, uh, that's right. pain from the sack still there. Of course, it's not a sack, but it's the pain from the play that ended uh, on the quarterback. Cody, they continue to move him around defensively. He was in a stand-up spot on the left side last time. He's going to come from that same position again. They got the throw and complete, but short of the first down. Dusty Sprague, who had been out with an injury, too, making a comeback tonight, gets the catch. But it's not going to be enough for the first down, and out will come the punting unit. going to be Tarp getting ready to kick it to Antonio Perkins. The punter inside his own 10 yard line. Looks like the Sooners have the return on though with Perkins back inside his own 35. Hit this one a mile into the Kansas City Knights. And fair catch again. Nice kick. Fair caught at about the 33 yard line. So far, Colorado can't get anything going, and they trail Oklahoma by three touchdowns. The drives are getting shorter, but the results are all the same. Three touchdown passes from Jason White in three possessions. 
And all Oklahoma so far, 21 to nothing. And I mentioned uh, this was a, an offense that was on fire coming into the game against a defense that was not very good. Adrian Peterson. And that time, the first tackler got him, Dominique Brooks. Short gain, got about a yard. The only problems I think uh, you've even seen Oklahoma has a few penalties tonight. They've had three penalties for illegal formations. And yeah. Swanee, the field situation itself could be causing some of that. Well, it could be causing a little confusion. The field down here is set up for an NFL game. Where the numbers are in the field are the NFL numbers. There are two white hash marks on the field. That's where the college numbers should be. And they cause some problems in terms of substitution and alignment. Peterson dropped for a loss this time. Tom Hubbard from the safety spot made the tackle. It's going to be third down and long after we changed than his daddy was. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Third down at 13. White. Third and long hasn't been a problem this time. It's incomplete. That's only the second incompletion of the game for Oklahoma, and they're going to have to punt, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, there was no nobody open to pass the line. He passed the first down, Marcus, so he did the only thing he could, and that is just throw it away. There's Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, so his team finally got a stop there and forces a Blake Ferguson upcoming punt. Robinson is back waiting on it for Colorado. Colorado's got a lot of guys up there close, like they might want to bring some pressure. He got the kick away. <laughs> this one high kick. Taken on the run on a fair catch at about the 33-yard line. 37-yard kick, but he kicked it a mile in the air. Time now. Affleck. There's our duck for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question, who was the last Oklahoma Sooner to lead the NCAA in single season rushing? All right, we'll have the answer for you a little bit later on. Adrian Peterson, not the leading rusher in the country, but he came into this game with more carries than anybody else in the country. Uh -huh. First down at the 34. Clap. Overshot a guy that was open. Monte had a step there, but it's incomplete. Again, Joel Clatt is not getting anywhere near the kind of time that's being afforded Jason White. Good point. That defensive line for Oklahoma is really a good one. Cody is an All-American. Jackson on the other side made the all-conference team. And we already talked about Burdine, the thing coming into the season with the two inside tackles. They lost uh, Dvorak and they lost uh, Harris. Right. And uh, Magruder and Pendleton, the guys that have played inside, have really played well. Dvorak there's a possibility that he might be welcomed back to the team next year. And of course, Tommy Harris, the aforementioned, is a Chicago Bear right now in the NFL. Clap, double pumps, goes out, got it complete to Mike Duran. And he's run out of bounds at about the 38 yard line. So this is by no means any penetration into OU territory, but this is the farthest on the field that Colorado's team has gone so far. And they come up with an important third down again. Third down to about six. Empty backfield except the quarterback in the shotgun. Five wide outs for Clapp. Again, he pumps once, twice, and intercepted. Antonio Perkins tipped it to himself. Slow to get up. Perkins missed four ball games, and that's when they had some trouble. Here's Perkins right here. The defensive back, the route's going to be inside. Watch Perkins as he follows the uh, receiver down into the inside, and he's going to knock the ball up in the air and picks it off. Antonio. That's his tenth interception of his career. Antonio said to us, maybe they'll try to come my way. And so maybe I'll be able to get one. I hope so. First down at the 40. On the turnover, his first of the season. <laughs> See if Oklahoma will try a quick strike. They pump fake. They come to the end around to Clayton. Clayton out 
runs everybody to the corner. Now looking for blockers. Inside the 25 he goes. So he's already got two touchdown catches and he shows his fancy footwork on an end around yeah. good for 16. And I like I like what Chuck Long is doing. He's not sitting back and and, and, and pulling in the uh, pulling in the horses. He's going he's reverses. He's throwing deep. He's doing everything in his game plan to put this game out of reach by halftime. Chuck is up for the Broyles Award as the top assistant coach in the country. What a prestigious honor. He's on the list with some other great assistant coaches around the country. Here's a throw out. Clayton with a blocker in front of him. Slips and went down on his own as he got inside the 20-yard line. Now, Bob and Brad, I know that Clayton just got that pass, but I want to talk about Jamal Brown, number 55. And you're not going to see what I saw on the play before that. He came downfield, and he was blocking the number 22 Sims for Colorado. He had him about five yards inside the line of scrimmage. By the time he finished blocking him, he had him down on his back, 10 yards out of bounds, <laughs> just totally <laughs> devastated him, and got up pumping his chest, saying, this is what it's all about. He says he's a guy that changes a little bit when that helmet and those pads go on. Like that. <laughs> the 19. Peterson now looking for a block from his quarterback. Doesn't get much of one, but he outruns everybody anyway to the far side. And Sims brought him down. Swanee was talking about Jamal Brown, and you know, when you're thinking about an offensive lineman, 320 pounds, you don't get to score touchdowns. So what's the thrill on the field? always you know been fun fun to run block you know especially when you got a guy like Adrian Peace and back there running the ball and and you know uh, we're just a physical team and, and and you know running the ball you just get in other guys face and just you know drive them off the ball and that's something that we practice hard on you know every week and that's something that as an offensive line we enjoy doing yeah you enjoy blocking for a guy like Adrian Peterson two tight ends set now on third and three they scored on this the last time they were in this formation this time they'll run it Peterson He's got the first down and more. Boy, he's strong. Flags are down. A Colorado player is down. And Adrian's lid came off. Kept his mouthpiece in, though. That's a good trick. Offside call. So it's going to be first down either way for the Sooners. Offside, 27 on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Down to the 11-yard line. And it was McChesney, the captain of the defense, holding his arm as he goes off. He's the best guy they probably have in that front four, and they yeah. can ill afford to lose him. So now here's Oklahoma knocking on the door again with 8.14 and the clock running in the second quarter, trying to go up by four touchdowns. First down at the 11-yard line of the Buffaloes. Draw play to Peterson. Down to the five. Wheatley had to go low to knock him down. And Adrian Peterson now has just passed Greg Pruitt for third place on Oklahoma's single season rushing lists. Well, we told you he needed 226 to have the all time single season mark coming in, and he's off to a heck of a good start. Well, not only the offensive line, but the fullback in there, Runnels. He does a great job up ahead, number 38. There you see a list of the top runners at Oklahoma. Pretty good company. Second down, they can get a first down inside the two. Adrian Peterson waits for his blockers. And now battles forward to about the three. Washington made first contact from his linebacking spot. The clock winds down. It'll be under seven minutes the next time Oklahoma snaps it as they've dominated the game so far. Coming into the ball game, Oklahoma had not been that good inside the 20. They were like eighth in the conference in scoring inside the red zone, but they're four for four tonight. They've only had one missed conversion on third down, as you saw. Now they've got third down and a couple. Runnels comes in as the fullback. He might be the lead man for Peterson if they throw. Moses a tight end in motion. It's Peterson puts his head down and drags people with him. 
for a first down, but not a touchdown. Boy, he ran into Washington. That was a nice collision. <laughs> and those two, you see Washington getting a slap on the helmet. It's a nice hit, kid. Yeah. He's only a sophomore, Washington. Peterson, a 19-year-old freshman. Watch this collision. Bang. <laughs> oh, man. Good form tackle there sure by the was. middle linebacker. Adrian Peterson has 99 yards rushing here in the first half. He's done a lot of the work. White thrown three touchdowns, and now let's see if he tries to get the freshman tailback in the end zone. First and goal, OU. Peterson to the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. And now he's got 100. And he's got him six. Well, it's sort of a clinic right now, isn't it? It is. That was the 36th play of the first half for Oklahoma. Colorado only has 13. Four possessions, four touchdowns. Hartley in for the point after. As Bob said, four for four in the Big 12. This time, Peterson looking for the end zone, looking for the 100-yard mark, and he got them both, 28 nothing Sooners. Now, Adrian Peterson now sitting around. He knows who takes care of business. These are some of his linemen there. And he's got 100 yards, his 11th 100-yard game. He joined Emmett Smith and Marshall Falk as only three freshmen who rushed for a thousand yards in seven games to open their careers. That's pretty good company too. They had three uh, over 200 yard games too, didn't they? Yep, we had, a, we had one of those against Texas. And penalty marker will be a flag on the return as Robinson trying desperately to get out that 20 yard line. Colorado just can't even do that. Well, I would say that if Oklahoma wanted to come out and make a statement to the rest of all of college football <laughs> yep. and to the BCS, they're doing it here with full Holding possession. Number 43 on the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So the problems continue to crop up. All Oklahoma so far, just under six minutes remaining in the first half here in Kansas City. Greasy and Linswan, I'm Brad Nessler. The Big 12 championship on the line tonight here in Kansas City, and it's all Oklahoma so far, leading by four touchdowns. And again, terrible field position again for Colorado. Pier 5 trying to get something going on the ground, and they can't get anything going offensively. Let's get an update from what's going on. It's their four-touchdown difference here. Look at the total yardage. Wow. Second down and nine. They fake the draw. Clap. Deep down the middle, is it intercepted? Very close. Rodney Poole had his hands on it. He couldn't hold it. Ron Monte was the intended receiver. Poole did a nice job of trying to undercut the wide receiver. I don't think there's any doubt that uh, if Oklahoma keeps playing the way they are, they're going to go ahead and win this ball game and probably be in the championship game. Of course, that, that meeting is tomorrow. They have a conference call. I think most of it's in New York, but uh, they have a conference call between uh, all the conferences and the, the bowls, and we'll find out where all these teams are going to end up. Of course, the BCS selection show on ABC tomorrow afternoon at 5 Eastern. Third down and nine. Here comes a blitz from the corner. Look out, Joel Clapp. Down he goes. Brandon Shelby was the first guy there, and then he got help from his friends up front. Going to be in a tough spot just to punt. Yeah, they've had they've had five possessions, four of which have started inside their 20. They have not had the benefit. And Perkins, the punt returner, is standing inside the 50, so they figure to get very good field position. Remember those touchdown drives are getting shorter. And as Bob said, they almost blocked it. This guy is a good kicker. And he's going to have to call a fair catch again. So it'll be at about the 46-yard line. Position they have to add to their already four-touchdown lead. 
They might try to get it right here. White, deep out, and it's caught by Travis Wilson. This is just pitch and catch. 27 more yards. Wheatley is not that big. In fact, he's uh, only 5'10 and 170 pounds. Wilson, one of the bigger guys, he's 6'3 and 215. So not only single coverage, but you got a mismatch. And Wilson just goes up and takes it away. These defensive backs for Colorado, not only are they small, but they're also young. A lot of sophomores. A lot of 5'9s and 5'10s on those corners. Yeah, a lot of second-year players. They lost some players to graduation and to transfer and to injury. Here's Jason White now in the shotgun. Waiting for the snap, looking for more points. He's already got three touchdown passes. Throws to Keelan Jones. Incomplete. That would have been number four. A little bit low. Keelan had to try to go get it. The freshman linebacker. Jordan Dizon was down there with him defensively. There's the numbers we talked about in the red zone this year. 18 touchdowns, no interceptions. He's back in there right now with a second and ten at the 19 of Colorado. Yeah, he was on a string coming into the ball games. He had thrown a 183 passes without an interception and 10 and 17 touchdowns at that point. Of course, he hasn't thrown an interception and he's thrown a few touchdowns. So that that those numbers are going up. End around to Clayton and Colorado. Smell this one coming. Manapuna stays with him. Vaca makes the uh, tackle from his defensive tackle spot and a loss of seven. Brad McChesney, Matt McChesney is back in the ball game. If you take a look at his left elbow, you see it's heavily bandaged up. He injured his left elbow against Kansas State, may have hyperextended it then, and just now has re injured it in this ball game. He's got a brace on his right elbow <laughs> they, and, a, they, and a wrap on his left. Well, they were talking about putting a brace on his left elbow also, but they may have had some problems just trying to get to that brace. Plus, he's playing through a couple of ankle sprains. So he's all banged up, but he's a warrior. Yeah, he wanted to go back in there. At, at the end of the season, everybody usually has some bruises, some nicks. He doesn't have many games left. This is a, He's a fifth-year senior, so he's got this one in the bowl game. The first guy to commit to the Buffalo program in 2000. McChesney toughing it and gutting it out, but right now his team in a big hole, 28 to nothing. Third down at 17. The third down's getting longer for Oklahoma, but they keep converting him. Now this one they're really going to have to earn. They've got to get down inside the 10-yard line. Jason White in the shotgun. Looking to his right, had three receivers that way now to come back. Screen to Kiwan Jones. To Kiwan weaving through people. Got down to the 13. He's not going to have a first down, though. Washington, the linebacker, tracked him down. He picked up 13 of what they needed. And now we assume we're going to see the field goal unit. And that'll bring out the freshman. Trey DiCarlo had been the kicker for Oklahoma and really struggled this year after a sensational season last year. And so Hartley, the true freshman, out of South Lake, Texas, he's been hitting extra points, but we don't even know about his field goal prowess yet. No, and he went through 11 games. It wasn't until last week, uh, the 11th game of the year, that he took his, his red shirt off of him. He'll try a 30-yard attempt from the near hash, and it's a fake. Bradley trying to get the first down, and he's got it. Mark Bradley, the holder. And it's first down, Oklahoma. We still don't know if he can kick field goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oklahoma is not leaving anything in the bag. Nope. Little fake kick. And then he had room off the left side, and he got it down near the five-yard line. Bradley, an excellent athlete, ex-quarterback, wide receiver. Of course, his dad was a quarterback in the early to mid 80s for Oklahoma. Danny was his dad, a good one in 81 through 84. So first and goal Sooners. At the Colorado six, White the lob to the corner. And it's intercepted. 
picked off in the end zone by Terrence Wheatley. He didn't get enough air under that one. Willie Roberts, the tight end, was his intended receiver and played beautifully by Wheatley. They tried to get a mismatch. Roberts is 6'7", and Wheatley is 5'10", but Roberts is the one that slips and falls down. That's absolutely right, Bob. Robert just slipped. He's in a pretty good position if he had his, if he could just control his body and get his feet underneath him to go up for it. But he goes to plant. Both feet slip away, and it's only a Colorado defense able to catch the ball. And guys, I was wondering if Jason White could make it to 200 passes without an interception. He got to 199. There you go. That goes all the way back to mid-October against Kansas State. And that interception is really not his fault. Right. Here's Clatt, and it almost gave it right back. Yeah. That one was almost intercepted. And by, by, by not being Jason White's fault, I mean that, that Roberts should have, at worst, knocked the ball right. down. He should have defended it, and not if, if he didn't catch it, and he should have caught it, but he should have at least not let the other guy catch it. Joel Clatt almost gave it back. That ball was very close to being intercepted by the Sooner defense on the ensuing play. We haven't seen Kloppenstein yet, the tight end. He's one of his favorite receivers. He's in there. Uh, second down and ten. Clap. Comes up short to purify. Bobby trying to get to the first down marker. Can't quite get there. Allen makes the stop. Pickup of seven. We're under two minutes here. Let's get another update from John in New York. Along with Craig James and Aaron Taylor, that's the ADT Championship Trophy. You play for a Super Bowl, you won a Super Bowl, but this has got to be a bigger throw. Well, it is right now, this time of the year for a lot of these college teams. Hey, coming up at halftime, Texas and Cal. Cal is barely beating Southern Miss. We'll find out if they think uh, Texas can sneak in. ACC and the Big East have some people going to the dance. We'll talk about it. All right, fellas, see you in about a minute, 20 seconds. Pass tipped. You talk about his own blitz. Yeah, Look at the good. size of the guy that almost got that ball. Dampier, the redshirt freshman, 300-pounder, <laughs> dropping into coverage. <laughs> I love this game. Here he is right here. He's going to charge and drop right back. Now, as you said, he's a big 300-pound defensive end. Defensive tackle <laughs> drops back right <laughs> back in the slant <laughs> area. Now, he got the execution right. He knew what he was supposed to do. Now he just needs to catch the ball. <laughs> That's the fifth three and out for Colorado. Torp's been a busy punter with that left foot, but he's done a nice job with it. Another beauty here, but Perkins has a chance at this one from the 24. And nice coverage by Colorado. They'll bring him down about a five-yard return with a minute five remaining in the half. Our Pacific Life game summary. To sum it up in a word, it's been sooner. First, it was Jason White to Peoples for five yards and a touchdown. That capped a long scoring march. Then he went 22 yards to Mark Clayton, his seventh touchdown catch of the year. Why not try it again? 22 more to Clayton in the corner. A terrific catch, his second score of the night. They just faked a field goal and were trying to go for more, but the ball was intercepted in the end zone. Yeah. But now they've got it back with a minute five to go in the half. And, and, and you, you might wonder, you know, why fake it? Why not kick the field goal? And I think you can't blame Bob Stoops. He's trying to win this ball game. He's trying to win, score as many points as he can, as fast as he can. Screenplay again to Kiwan Jones. Now, this time he's got blockers in front, but they didn't get turned around in time. Pass to Kiwan Jones. To have Washington come down there and sneak in to make the tackle. Reminder, coming up later in the game, we'll tell you about our Chevrolet players of the game. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Gary Barnett, a long season, a three and zero start, a one and four October, a three and zero finish. And he said, "You know, I feel like I'm the pretty much the the dad of this group." He said, "We've huddled together, we had our problems, uh, we got back in a positive note. We couldn't wait to go to work in August on football." And uh, he said the only problem is when you feel like you're the dad of a whole team like this and dad's not even sure he's going to have his job, it makes a pretty tough year. But uh, they battled through it all, and uh, they deserve to be here. But right now they're taking it on he said, the kisser. He said it was a very tough year, but he says it was probably the year he's had the most fun ever at coaching. Most gratifying. And he just was almost speechless when he was named by the Associated Press as the coach of the year in the Big 12. 
came out and so just so happy for his coaches and his kids that stuck together. Well, he's a good football coach. Anytime you go to Northwestern in the Big Ten and you win back to back Big Ten championships yep. and take him to the Rose Bowl twice, that's 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 good coaching. Now it's the Sooners with a second down and seven. From their own 34-yard line. Jason White looking left all the way and goes that way. And in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Joe John Finley. And they like this kid Finley, even though he didn't get that catch, because he looks like he's going to grow into a pretty good tight end. Yeah, he reminds us of uh, what was it, Brent Jones a couple of years ago. Yeah, for Trent Oklahoma. Smith and those guys. Yeah. Uh, but Finley is a big target, uh, runs well. But uh, Moses is the guy now, but uh, Finley will be around next year. Got that frame they like. He's got good speed, 6'6", only about 235 now, but you know he'll be bigger eventually. Third down and seven. And that's Finley, the tight end, will be in motion. White finally got some pressure and throws high and incomplete intended for Bradley. That's the first time there's even been a white jersey in the vicinity. Alonzo Barrett, the freshman, coming around the corner to put some heat on Jason White. It's going to be a punting situation. We asked you the Aflac trivia question a little bit earlier, and it was, who was the last Oklahoma Sooner to lead the NCAA in single season rushing? And we'll take some guesses, I guess, right after Ferguson's punt. Colorado was a man short. They hustle him out there into the middle of the defensive line. They got some decent pressure, but Ferguson got a beauty of a kick. Robinson waiting on it at the 15. Broke the first tackle, but he won't get by number two and number three. He doesn't catch many, many fair catches. No, he doesn't. He doesn't like that, boy. 52-yard punt. So we asked you a trivia question. Fellas, you want to guess? You want me to go? What? Uh, I was looking at that thing a little early. You go ahead and go. Well, I keep saying that coming in, Adrian Peterson needed 226 yards for the single-season rushing record for the Sooners, and that was Billy Sims in 78, so I'm going to say Billy Sims in 78. Well, I saw that thing the earlier. They had the chart of all the Oklahoma players up there. Uh-huh. I like Billy Sims. Swanee? Well, I'm the team guy. Let's go over for Billy. <laughs> there you go. We don't agree all the time, but sometimes we do. The answer is... 1978, it was Billy Sims, the Heisman Trophy winner and former tailback, who was a great one not only there, but with the Detroit Lions. And he was the man that led the country in rushing almost 1,800 yards that season. So in the final 25 seconds here, Colorado keeps it on the ground. Is the Aflac scoreboard, do we put that up at uh, the Big 12 Championship in oh, Kansas why, City? Why did you ask for that? I don't, I don't know. I like. I don't. I don't know if those numbers are right. I think it's 10, 9, and 7, isn't it? <laughs> you keep a count. Well, I'm trying to trying to get in double digits. <laughs> All Oklahoma in the first half as they lead 28 to nothing on three Jason White touchdown passes. Here's Lynn. Coach Stoops, I know you'd probably like to have that interception, your tight end slip down in that play, have it back. Everything seems to be going your way. I have but one question. The one thing that's probably been caused you to have more problems are the penalties for illegal formation on your offense. What's been going on? Well, we shouldn't have a tackle up on the line of scrimmage, but uh, hopefully we can play the second half as well. We need to. Okay, Coach. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you. So, Bob Stoops knows that right now he's two quarters away from a probable trip to Miami in the Orange Bowl against USC. That'll all be determined tomorrow. The guys that'll tell you about it are the guys coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show. Here's John Craig and Aaron in New York. Fellas. Brad, thanks a lot. There's, there's two statements really being made here. Oklahoma's first, but we deserve to be in the championship game, and we're not going to repeat what happened last year. The second is Jason White saying, look at me for the Heisman. Jason White is saying a lot more than that. He's, he's saying we are committed. We want to win this national championship. And, hey, check me out. I'll throw a couple touchdowns, and I'm pretty good. How about that Oklahoma defense, huh? You talk about the Oklahoma defense going out there. This Colorado offense, one first down. I mean, Oklahoma's defense is playing national championship football, and I think we haven't seen that a whole lot this year. They hope their next date is in the Orange Bowl with USC. When we come back, we'll look at the entire day after this match. And a word from our ABC stations. Coming up, certainly it was warm in the first half. Three touchdown passes 
Adrian Peterson's got the other one. 28 to nothing at halftime here in Kansas City. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan. Partner, I don't know what I'm more impressed with. Colorado's got one first down. That came by penalty. So the Oklahoma defense is playing great, and their offensive line's been spectacular. Well, that's the bottom line. The offensive line is great. They've got the five wide receivers. They've got the running back, and they've got the quarterback that's been around for six years, 24 years old. He knows everything that's going on. So they're playing like it tonight. They're playing like they're on a mission to... If they win this game, we, we get to play in a national championship yeah. game. Yeah, let's go. That's, you know, their first goal is, well, first we got to take care of business, win the conference. But they were always looking for a bigger thing, and now they're halfway there, and they're halfway to well, Miami. Even back when we did the Texas game, you know, we said, well, Texas is just a step on the way to winning the conference and getting us to where we want to go, and that is a national championship. So they've been almost perfect in the first half. The one miscue was an interception thrown by Jason White and that one was when his tight end slipped down in the end zone and probably would have given him a chance for another touchdown. And so we know that Joel Clatt and company are going to have to find a way to get things warmed up here for Colorado. They just have done nothing offensively so far. They will get the football first though for Gary Barnett's Buffaloes. And Trey DiCarlo is going to kick off. Stefan Robinson and Hugh Charles are the guys waiting on it. Second half of the Big 12 championship underway. Nice kick deep into the end zone, and Colorado will have to work from the 20 as we check in with Swanee. Now, thank you, Brad. I talked to Gary Barnett and tell him as he was bringing his team down. I asked him about what his message was to his team at halftime, and he said, the team that played the first half of this ball game is not the same team I started coaching in August. He says, they came out here as if they were happy to be here and not accepting the challenge. So I challenged him. I challenged him to play better in the second half. I challenged him to be better than they were in the first half. And that's what it'll be about in the second half, upping their game to meet the challenge of Oklahoma. That exactly sounds like Gary and his approach to coaching, there's no doubt. Almost perfectly quoted by Swanee. Vickers was the motion man. Play action. Clack comes up firing and incompletes. Bob Stoops almost caught that on the sideline. Our Pacific Life game summary statistically in the first half. <laughs> you don't like to see minus 14. No, not at all. And, and one of the things that you have to be able to do if you're Colorado is be able to run the football. Twice as much in the time of possession. You see the average starting position. That doesn't hurt the cause either when you're right around your own 40 every time you have the football. No third down conversions for Colorado. You just you can't keep drives going unless you can convert. See if they can get a second down going. Play action to purify. The throw incomplete behind the intended receiver Evan Judge. And Joel Klatt has not been sharp at all. That again was a receiver that I, I thought was open. He's four out of 14. It seemed like when Oklahoma rattled him early, even put a hit on him late that was yeah. called for uh, roughing the passer, yeah. and he never seemed to recover from well, that. Well, he's, he's been up and down, hot and cold, all year long. Last year, he had an outstanding season. This year, he's been up and down, and uh, so far this game, he, he, he operates best when the running game is going. Exactly. They, they, they have not had a running game all night. You saw the minus 14 in rushing, Bobby Purify there. Thousand yard rusher has been unable to muster anything out of that backfield. Quick drop now for Clatton. Throws complete. Trying to get a first down and not going to get there. His Little Hales, Tyler Little Hales, Antonio Perkins holding on to his leg. He got eight, but it's still short of the first down. So Perkins, who made the play as the defensive back, trots right back down the field, gets a word about the special teams as he'll stay in there as the punt return man. Hasn't been able to break anything as a punt returner tonight because. The punter for Colorado has been their one bright spot. This kid can really kick it. We look from behind the left footer again on fourth down. And he's going to throw. Completed it, but it's going to pick up a first down. Oklahoma said, I've seen that before from Texas A&M and a couple other teams, and we're not buying it. Rufus Alexander made the tackle. Yeah, they, like you said, they were expecting anything from this team. It's almost a desperate team with nothing to lose. Right here, watch this. The back is going to come behind the line of scrimmage and receive the pass. That's Dominic Brooks. Number 18, I think it is. Yep. He makes the catch, the and Alexander's right there. Personal foul on 96, Oklahoma. 
15 yard penalty. First down. Well, that was on Lynn Magruder, but it's a post play penalty, and it'll still be a first down. It'll just take away some of what would have been unbelievably good field position and back it up closer to the 40 yard line. Now, I'll never forget that Oklahoma, what is it, AM game yeah. when uh, AM pulled off two. Uh, punt, special team a, a punt and a fake field goal yeah, and, and the they scored on yeah. both of them and and the other one the second one the, the, the fake field goal they were kicking from like uh, what about the 15 yard line yeah. and Oklahoma and Stoops was ready for it knew it said, was coming play safe defense play safe and they still executed the uh, the fake field goal and the touchdown got a touchdown so now they'll take over excellent field position again despite the penalty Adrian Peterson stops in the middle of the pile trying to bounce it outside and they're waiting for him and he loses a couple. Brian Ewu made the stop from his outline outside linebacker spot all Oklahoma in this Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game in Kansas City tonight they came out opening drive of the ball game went the length of the field 80 yards Jason White threw a touchdown pass then he threw two more to Mark Clayton the end of the first quarter and the first play of the third quarter Peterson with 100 yards in the first half has the other touchdown on the ground there's your leaders those are the guys we're talking about that's why it's 28 to nothing at stake here the Big 12 title and a trip in all likelihood and the way they're playing they're certainly not going to lose any votes the Oklahoma Sooners would go to the national championship game of the FedEx Orange Bowl in Miami January 4th right here on ABC. They look like a team that yeah. wants to get there. <laughs> the guy wants to go too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, certainly of the teams that are in are playing today, USC versus UCLA. UCLA played them well. It was a rivalry game. Colorado is not giving a very good game to Oklahoma so far. They could come back in the second half. But those two teams certainly look good, Oklahoma and USC. Auburn and Tennessee, I don't think it's a final yet in Georgia. Here comes a blitz on White. Down the middle he goes, completes it inside the 30. Mark Clayton wheels around, gets a first down. And he got about nine on third down and eights. We talked about the BCS. The selection show will be tomorrow, but the BCS standings coming in brought to us by Allstate. USC won. As Bob said, they had to struggle against the Bruins, but they won it. Oklahoma winning here. Auburn ahead by 10, we understand, in the fourth quarter. So it looks like the Tigers are going to be undefeated, too. So it gets down to California and Texas. California's ahead 17 to 10. That guy's on his phone, got a good sign, but he's got to look under it or nobody's going to know what he's trying to tell him at home. First down. Kiwan Jones, Kiwan Jones into the secondary. The reason I say, Brad, he gets down to California and Texas. California is ranked number four in the BCS and Texas is five. If California should lose, then Texas would move up to number four and the top four spots automatically in. in the BCS are automatically in so Texas would move up to four with the California loss and be in that would that would hurt the Rose Bowl because they could not they would not be able to take Cal against Michigan in the Rose Bowl Peterson back in second down long one coming up the stretch play it's Adrian got the corner in a hurry and got the first down Guys on the linebacker made the stop freshman on freshman there. Well, we're going to straighten it all out for you tomorrow because John Craig and Aaron will be along with you tomorrow. We'll reveal which teams will battle for the national championship plus all of the other bowl championship series matchups. Tostitas BCS selection Sunday, 5, third, uh, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific right here on ABC tomorrow. It's, it's, it's almost as simple as this. Texas and Mac Brown are on the outside looking in yep. right now. Should Cal lose... Mac Brown and Texas could be in the Rose Bowl. Probably will be. First down in the red zone again for Oklahoma. Just outside the six. Adrian Peterson up the middle inside the 10 and powers his way down inside the five for another first down. 12 yard gain, first and goal, Oklahoma after we check in with John and New York. To Coach Tupperville and the Tigers. We know they're yelling war damn eagle down there in Auburn tonight's perfect season. First and goal at the five. Adrian Peterson. 
This time stopped for a loss. Dies on the linebacker. Boy, I tell you, this kid's good, Bob. I can see why he's newcomer of the year, yep. freshman of the year. Yeah. From Hawaii. First true freshman ever to start a season opener at middle linebacker in school history. You got a lot of young players on this Colorado unit. Only 12 seniors. 50 of the 70 are freshmen or sophomores. So they've got a lot of young players that are going to be around for a long time around here. One of the Colorado players goes down kind of delayed reaction and it looked like Abraham Wright the defensive end. So they're out to attend him. Here's the end of the play. Maybe we'll be able to see Peterson being wrapped up by Dizon. And that was the tackle for a loss. We don't quite know what happened to the Colorado player. They're helping him up right now. And apparently he's all right. A sophomore out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, as a matter of fact. That's one of those that uh, got out of the state of Oklahoma. Bob Stoops doesn't let too many get away unless Miles doesn't let many get away. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma working out another 12 win season. This is their fourth time they've been the Big 12 South Titleist. And they have two Big 12 titles in 2000 and 2002. And in 2000, strangely enough, that was four years ago. We were here for the game. They won that game. They went to the Orange Bowl and won the national championship. This year, they played the exact same schedule, yep. same teams right. in the same locations, right. same perfect record right. if you think of omens and all that yep. stuff. And, and played here, and then they're going to yep. the Orange Bowl in Miami. <laughs> That's kind of the way it looks. Yep. We've got a timeout, 10.37 remaining here in the third quarter. It's been one of those nights for Oklahoma spending most of their time at Colorado Territory. And now they've got second down a goal at the five of Colorado again, leading by 28. Moses in motion, the toss sweep, Adrian Peterson toward the goal line, battling, but Colorado will keep him out. Got inside the two. Is there a penalty marker down? Washington made the stop. And let's see about the flag. Offside. Just what Colorado needed. Go half the distance to the goal on a play when they stop the tailback finally. So let's see where the spot's going to be. About uh, they're giving Jason White his options here. That was from the five. With the play, he got down, I think, inside the two with a half the distance. It would be at about the two and a half, but you'd save a down. So there's not much space difference. There is a down difference. Let's see what the call is. Offside, defensive right tackle. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. There you go. So still second down. Second goal. The Christmas list is out. <laughs> yeah. They got a couple checked there already. Yeah. They got them all checked, don't they? No, they want, they want the one more. Come on, baby. Now, right now, the short-term present would probably be Adrian Peterson getting in the end zone for the second time tonight. He's already scored from a yard out. Second and goal, Oklahoma. Here he comes. Getting there. Is he in? Awfully close, they say. Now they say touchdown. He is in. That's as excited as I've seen Adrian Peterson all year. He's starting to know you don't get many magical seasons like this. Regardless of how good a program Oklahoma has, he's thinking, why don't I get a big old ring right away as a 19-year-old? Second touchdown of the night for him. Remember what I said, Bob Stoops, as he's patting him on the helmet, says, yeah, those flashy runs are nice, but I like those two and three yarders where he carries some guys. Yes. He just did that again. Extra point by Harley's up and good. And the Sooners tack on another touchdown. Another look at Adrian Peterson, and for him, this will be his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. Yeah, watch at the end of this. He's going to stick the ball across the goal line. He's going to get slapped loose, but it's a good thing an official sees that he got it across. That's a very dangerous thing to do when you're in, in a, a crowd of people. 
We you, saw Vince he, Young did the it, same it, thing on a quarterback that, sneak. Exactly. Jumping over the top. Touchdown run on He did have possession when it went across, but it's a good thing. One of the officials saw it. Almost half his yardage has come after contact. We said he's hard to bring down, and that was as tough of two and a half yards as you've probably seen from him this year in his second touchdown of the night. Next weekend, Tiger Woods, VJ Singh, and defending champion Davis Love III had a field of 16 of the best golfers on the planet. The Target World Challenge presented by Williams is next Saturday and Sunday, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Well, the drive... As I said earlier, the drives are getting shorter. That one only went 41 yards. Remember, there was a fake punt attempt yep. that Oklahoma was all over. didn't work. And so they took over, and they're going to have to score again. A yard deep. Robinson bringing it out. And still hasn't gotten to the 20-yard line. I tell you, that group covering kicks for Oklahoma has done a great job tonight. Oteet and Shelby down that time. To make the hit. The Big 12 Players of the Year for this Big 12 championship. These are the guys that we picked. Jason White, kind of hard to argue. He's got 33 more touchdown passes this year after 40 a season ago winning the Heisman. He's certainly one of them. I picked Cedric Benson of Texas and Swanee and Bob go with Jason White of Oklahoma. All good choices. Yeah, all, they all had good years. Cedric Benson, uh, Reggie McNeil at AM had a great year. First down. Play action. Flat. Oh, just threw it right in the ground. Right. I guess he knew that play was going to be blown up. Uh, Akers was the guy. Did that on purpose. Because everything was covered. Officially, uh, officially the conference players of the year by the Big 12 are these two guys. Yeah. And uh, Boy, Derek Johnson, just some kind of linebacker for Texas. We've seen him a couple times this year, and he was awfully impressive. Yeah, he should win every award uh, out there for a defensive player or a linebacker, Derek Johnson. Uh, Buck, Buckus and Bednarik and uh, all of those. Yeah. He's, He's something special. He really is. Second down to 10. Rolls out and throws on the run, completes it. Trying to wheel for a first down, and Mackey gets it. Pickup of 11. And that's Colorado's first first down since nine and a half minutes remained in the first quarter. And that one came by penalty, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice job by Mackey. Dan Pier, the defensive tackle number 74, gets out there and makes a play. Part of the tackle. Mackey's 25th catch of the year. Had his first start last week in that all-important win over Nebraska and went over 100 yards receiving. And now a nice run by Bobby Purify. Purify, one of the captains, fifth-year senior out of Colorado Springs, got an extra year of eligibility after an injury-marred season last year. And you talk about a tough kid. He hadn't had a lot of positive runs tonight. He's playing with third-degree separations in both his shoulders. Yeah. I mean, put pads on and then go run into guys about 35 times a game and see how your shoulders yeah. feel. If you're a running back, one thing you don't want to have hurt is your shoulders because that's what you need to lower yourself to run through people. He's been a warrior. Playing through all that pain. Second down, about three. They fake it to Purify. Flat overthrows his intended receiver. Kind of threw it away again, I think. Bobby Purify, we talked about him out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. One of the guys from the 2000 class. The second guy to come in in 2000. What makes him so special as we took a look at his spotlight? Well, first of all, we said he's <laughs> he got to be put back together. He's a little bit healthier, but his shoulders have been terrible this year. He's a very focused player, and he's a slasher. He can run over 1,000 yards rushing this season. Came in sixth in the Big 12, 1,010 yards. Normally, that'd be better for better than sixth place but there's a lot of great running backs in this conference and there's one playing on the other side as well and his team has a 35 to nothing lead with 822 remaining in the third quarter 
bench here. They lead 35 to nothing. Third down and two here for Colorado after they finally got a first down here. Trying to keep a drive sustained. Here comes a blitz. They get the clap. And again, guess who knocked it down? The big fella <laughs> in his own blitz again. It was Dampier, the freshman. He's, he has a knack of doing that. And you're right. His own blitz from one side and Dampier, number 74. Just, yeah, that's, that's just good smart play by a young defensive lineman. If you're not going to get near the quarterback and put pressure on him, get your hands up. Get good vision, see where he's throwing it, and get your hands up. Fourth down again. Another punt upcoming. Perkins yes. again will have to call for the fair catch and makes a fingertip catch at about the 31 yard line, just a 34 yard punt again, but no return once again. I want to welcome aboard all of you watching tonight's game. Uh, the Armed Forces Network in 178 countries and over 200 ships at sea. We're proud to have you with us. And we want you to know we all stand behind you as you defend our freedom. It's great to have all of you along. Swanee? Well, Brad, there's uh, an additional 2,000 men and women from the armed services spread around the stadium. Gil Kassan, who is the president of the uh, Cadbury Schweppes Company, uh, the parent of Dr. Pepper, bought 2,000 tickets to give to the men and women of the armed services, and so they're here enjoying tonight's ball game. That's great. We know that Captain Moser's got some fans and friends and family there saving him a seat. Looked like a pretty good seat, actually. Uh-huh. Yeah. Eight minutes left. Well, they're in the winning section. I can't give you that much. <laughs> the Sooner fans are going to be happy fans. Their motto, and you saw the sign maybe held up behind the folks for Captain Moser, finish has been the motto for Oklahoma this year. And finish means we didn't finish what we started last year because we lost this game for the Big 12 title, and then we lost to LSU. And all we had was a great regular season and nothing to show for it. That's not happening to them tonight, at least not to this point. Adrian Peterson cuts outside across the 40. Peterson bumped out of bounds. Another electrifying run by the freshman. He picks up 24 more yards. Again, that offensive line up front just giving a stalemate this time. And then he outruns him to the side. 55 is Jamal Brown. Joseph and Carter, Bush up front, and Sims, number 60, all doing their thing to shake loose Adrian Pearson. Peterson. Guys, we talk about Adrian Peterson being tough. I mean, he is, and, and he deserves every accolade he's been given so far this year. But he's even tougher than most people think because in August, in the first scrimmage, he actually got hurt, separated his left shoulder, and he's still been playing. Of course, we saw him when he re-injured that shoulder against Texas A&M, but nothing gets him out of the lineup. And even when he got injured in that A&M game, went to the locker room, came back with a brace on it. Here's a strike to Clayton Fumble. And Ficky got back on top of it. They're still piling up there. Nope, it's Colorado ball. Lorenzo Sims, I think, might be the guy on the bottom. Clayton had a nice pickup down the middle and then lost the handle, and it is Sims with a fumble recovery. We get another look. It's a nice throw, a little square in route. Sims, I mean, Clayton just gets it knocked loose, and it almost comes back to him. Washington and Sims are in there fighting for it. Brooks, the guy that made the hit right there, 18, that popped it out. Almost gets it back. So that one will go in the reception column for Mark, who's got a couple of touchdown catches, but he also coughs it up. Coming in on the season, Oklahoma plus 11 in the turnover department. They don't fumble or get intercepted very often, and they've won one of each tonight. Well, that's the first turnover for Colorado. They've had 10 turnovers in the last four games, well, 10 takeaways. They got the interception on oh, yeah. White earlier, that. but yeah, that didn't really right. account to much. Yeah. Magruder makes a big hit there. No gain, maybe a loss of a yard. Purify has had tough you know sledding tonight. Yeah. Well, I think both lines for Oklahoma, the offensive line and the defensive line, are handling Colorado. There's no question about that uh, they're dominating in the line of scrimmage. As you can see, Colorado hasn't even reached their own 40, much less Oklahoma territory. Clap 
play action had it tipped at the line and almost intercepted very close to being picked off by Brodney Poole somebody got a hand on it yeah we said that we said that the quarterback uh, Clatt works best when he when he's got a running game a play action uh, passing game and they haven't had a, any kind of a running game at all I think they got minus six yards rushing as that ball gets deflected Lance Mitchell I think's a guy that got a hand on at the middle linebacker snaps third down and long and you can probably forget your play action part here though purify is in the Buffalo's backfield straight drop flat throws incomplete intended for Monte and they've got to give it up again Colorado's now 0 for 9 yeah. on their third down conversion what we, what we said at the opening about 11 0 team yeah. playing a 7 and 4 team and it's not a beauty contest the, the, the 11 0 team is, is is playing like their play is supposed to play all year and the 7 and 4 is playing like they played all year so it's uh, the, the better team is definitely playing like it here tonight that three points you saw was a Nebraska field goal that was kind of with tongue in cheek to avoid a shutout. They shut out Baylor. They're shutting out Colorado. So 10 quarters, three points. Perkins trying to shake away and can't get anything on the return again. So Oklahoma with a big lead with 6 0 6 remaining third quarter in Kansas City. Things not going well for the Buffaloes, but they are for the Sooners. Back in Kansas City. At the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, and right now, Colorado looking at a goose egg on the scoreboard. Last year, after getting the first touchdown of the ball game, the Sooners saw Kansas State score 35. Right now, they've got 35, and have their offense back on the field. Good field position again. Their own 39-yard line. White Peterson's knee touchdown. He bounced back up so fast <laughs> had to look quickly. Now we talked about him having big nights in big games and again tonight he's at 140 yards and two touchdowns and we still got a lot of football left. It's just amazing what he has done this year as a true freshman. I mean, it's, it's, you know he's got the size but he also has the temperament and the experience and the, uh, the character to carry this out. I mean to be away from home you know a lot of guys don't even know where the library is you can't find out let alone rush for 300 200 yards in three games and flags are down look at that run by Travis Wilson after the catch Travis Wilson saying it's a face mask and that's probably going to get the call there are flags all over the field Well, the call is going to go against Colorado, but it's not a face mask call. The legal substitution, I think, and Bob Stoops saying we don't want it, we want the play. Yeah. And there's the look of a coach that knows he's outmanned tonight, at least at this point. But still, they will be going to a bowl game, win or lose, and it looks like it's going to be a loss. Illegal participation on the defense. Twelve people on the field. Penalty is declined. It's a first down. Probably the uh, Champ Sports Bowl in uh, Florida against Georgia Tech, I think, is what's going to happen with Colorado and their bowl uh -huh. situation. Well, this team is just going to get better and better. Quarterback is back. Uh, they don't have Purify back, but they got some young backs. Vickers is back. Most of their defense, except for McChesney, is back. So uh, a young ball club Colorado has. First down, Sooners. White back to throw. Fires wide open man out in the flat as Runnels, the fullback. And he's got another first down as we check in. John Saunders in New York with an update, John. Well, Brad, it's time to start thinking before you lock in your ballot for the singular All-American Player of the Year. Will it be Jason White, Cedric Benson, Alex Smith, Adrian Peterson, or Matt Liner? To vote, text message the word player to 64444 on your cell phone or log on to ESPN.com, keyword singular. 
those guys. Yeah, who do you like, partner? Um, that's a good question. I like this guy right here. Yeah. He's something to build on. Because yeah. he's still a baby. How about uh, of course three great quarterbacks mixed uh, How in about there. Matt Leinert, what he's done out there? They lost a lot of their offensive line. There a lot of the receivers were gone. Matt Leinert was probably the only guy back to build around uh, and they developed some guys and, and he's brought them back to one of the top offenses in the country. You know a guy that's not on that list but I bet will be on the list next year. <laughs> Reggie Bush. Oh, yeah. Wow. For being first down. Is, is he exciting or what? I, I think he is probably the most e exciting player in the country. He's explosive. I mean there are some others like uh, I think Braylon Edwards at Michigan the wide receiver when he gets his hands on the ball. You kind of uh, hold your breath when this kid gets it every time. Uh, Peterson, the Devin Hester, yeah. the uh, return guy for the University of Miami Hurricanes. But Bush just does so many different things. If he got more touches, it'd just yeah. be unbelievable how much yardage he might get. That you. is for sure. If he had more touches, his results and his numbers would be way up there along with all those other guys. First down and 20 now with a penalty. White goes back to throw and it's intercepted as receiver slip and out down the sideline the Buffaloes with an interception and they're finally in Oklahoma territory Lorenzo Sims with the interception good interception by Sims but a nice call partner the receiver did slip and the ball was thrown right on target the top receiver closest to the sideline who is that Bradley it's, uh, Bradley and the ball was just thrown to the outside right where it should have been both interceptions by Jason White should not have been his fault or not his fault should not have been interceptions he stays on his feet he makes the catch Bradley instead of Sims that's Sims fifth interception of the season so Colorado finally in Oklahoma territory here at the 32 but they don't get any farther than the 32 now we got some guys throwing some haymakers out there and there's flags all over we're probably going to have personal fouls in two directions a couple guys got into it over there well you don't want to get in the fight and be kicked out of a game After the play ended personal foul 93 on the defense 93 is disqualified oh he is gone and You're he's right. out of the next game too Dell, that's Dell. he he'll miss at least a half of the championship game for being kicked out of this one. That's what I was just talking about. You don't want to do something and get yourself kicked out because the championship game is the next one. Now he's getting an earful from his head coach and he says he was pushing me and shoving me in the face. Oh, Bob Stoops is hot. We'll show you a shot of it after this play. Here it is. Your screen right here, right there. That doesn't do your team any good. So now Colorado finally inside the red zone. And the fans for Oklahoma come to life for their defense. This is as noisy as it's been in here tonight. Here if I. Bobby broke one tackle. Got down to about the 12. Ingram cuts him down there. There's a look at Aledale who was just kicked out. Go ahead and run it. It's right up here. One, two, three. Yeah. And then the reaction of the head coach. Yeah, he's yelling at him for going back at him. He, you know, that's just a mistake by a young. Hey, Odell, he's a junior. He just said, Stoops just said to the official, yeah, I understand. You did what you had to do. Yep. And that's a big fella who's been knocking passes down, knocking the running back down for a loss of four. Dampier again. Lawrence has had him a pretty good game. He really has. He missed about three or four games in the middle of the season. He was not on the depth chart that was sent to us by Oklahoma. He wasn't in the starters or the backups. And uh, he's in there. We didn't even know he was going to play. I tell you what, they're going to be glad they have him with Aodell being thrown out of the ball game too because they play the same position. Yes, sir. Third down and long, Colorado. Now you're going to hear the OU fans come to life again. 
I don't know if they came here expecting to shut out Colorado, but that's what they'd like them to do right now. Joel Platt in the shotgun. Pressured. Lost one. Incomplete. Mike Duran was the intended receiver. Yeah. You know, it's 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 tough. Joel Klatt standing in the pocket. You get pressure. You get blitzed. He's been outside the pocket a lot of times. There's just nobody open. Nope. This defense for Oklahoma, Brent Venables and Bo Pelini, doing a great job. Now Mason Crosby will come in to attempt a field goal to try to get that egg off the scoreboard there for Colorado. This will be a 34-yard field goal attempt. He's already got the school record, 18 field goals this year. He's got an excellent leg to try to get Colorado on the scoreboard, and they do. So Crosby puts three up. He's about, he's more automatic, actually, with scoring points than some of the other teams they have in Colorado. <laughs> Talk about three-pointers, Mason, 71% from 50 yards out and Chris Copeland's the best three-point shooter Colorado's got and he's not that good on the basketball team <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's pretty good uh, that's cool that's so, good so 19th field goal of the year Crosby. came after the Lorenzo Sims interception on a pass that as Bob said the interception itself certainly wasn't yeah, I think Jason I, White's fault I think Crosby is up for the one of the three finalists for the Groza Award Mike Nugent of Ohio State is certainly in that also so just a 16 yard scoring drive in five plays a little over two minutes they used and just over two minutes remaining in the third quarter Jason that wasn't your fault my man he's uh, Jason White's had a great year there's no there's no doubt about it his numbers his numbers aren't quite as good as they were last year but because last year they had to, they were a throwing offense right. this year they're running a lot with Adrian Peterson. Kick goes to Mark Bradley at about the two. Bradley's got a little seam up the middle. Out across the 30 to the 34. 32 yard kick return. As we take a look at our Pontiac drive summary. In the ball game, Oklahoma's scoring drives. 80 yards was their longest one. That was their opening march of the ball game in 11 plays. That one took the longest as well. Three touchdown passes. The last two, great field position as Bob circled it there, and they both were capped by Adrian Peterson touchdown runs. It's a pretty good looking night. Yeah. Now they work from their own 34. Peterson. And he's collared. Boy, Alex Lagan on the outside. Dragged him down with one hand. I think most of these starters for Oklahoma are going to play through the third quarter and maybe into one series of the fourth quarter. But let me let me say something about this. You know, we all talk about Jason White and the numbers that he's put up. The backup quarterback is Tom Grady. He has thrown 11 passes all year. Yeah. I mean, what if something would happen to Jason White? I mean, they would have an inexperienced guy in the ball game right off the bat. And out to the 40 on the completion to Clayton. There's the guy Bob's talking about, Tommy Grady, the yeah. redshirt freshman out of Huntington Beach, California. He's thrown 10 passes, thrown 11 passes, completed 10 for one touchdown and no interceptions. And uh, had they gotten in the situation that Bob mentioned, early in the year where it looked like for some reason Jason White would be out and of course you you think about that because he's had knee surgery back to back years on knees and both of those are healthy now thank goodness but they would have gone to Paul Thompson as the number two quarterback but they're red shirting him and then next year they got the true freshman that's been working with him this year that everybody talks about that'll be in the mix here's White down the middle perfect strike to the 45 and inside the 45 pick up a 16 he's to like, mark Clayton again he's, he's like a man playing with boys Jason Clay well he, no, he is 24 he's, 20, <laughs> he's, he's 24 years old he's in his sixth season because of injuries and uh, he's as old 
he's 24 years old, but Michael Vick is 24 that's years right, old. That's right. That's I mean, right. I mean, Michael Vick playing against these guys, that's man against boys. There's Josh Heupel, who the last time we were here was the guy that took him through this game and down into the national championship. And now they've just got 15 more minutes. And they look like they'll have another opportunity for a national title in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Big lead for Oklahoma, 35 to 3 at the end of three. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports, home with the Bowl Championship Series. A chance for a Big 12 title for two teams. One thinking upset, one thinking differently, one remembering a year ago and not wanting it to happen again. And the Oklahoma Sooners have come in through three quarters. Their defense has been strong. Their Heisman Trophy winning quarterback has been on target. And their sensational freshman tailback has been nothing short of superb again. They're 15 minutes away from the Orange Bowl. 35 to 3 is our score. We enter the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew here. Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship in Kansas City. All Sooners so far. They're back in Colorado territory with the first down at the 44. Draw play to Keywan Jones, and that's not how you draw it up. Nice job defensively. As Colorado drops him for a loss of about three. Let's take a look at our cumulative the stats brought to you by Dr. Pepper through three quarters minus five rush a couple of key ones and right here minus five yards rushing for Colorado and converging at nine of 12 third down plays for Oklahoma and then when you have the ball 13 extra minutes that doesn't help either Oklahoma's defense tonight the longest play they've allowed was 11 yards so they've been as good as their offense second and 13 white screen pass blown up beautifully Brian Ewu outside linebacker a good one out of Houston Texas a loss of four more and Kiwan slow getting up took a pretty good pop he just barely got that thing in his hands and then he really took a shot and he's coming off and I'm not sure if it's his leg or his hand. He's upset. And he's shaken up on the play. May have taken a low. May, may have just been a low shot, and that might be the problem. But now, you see, like a team on a mission, this Oklahoma team. This is this is Stoops' sixth year at Oklahoma, and if if they continue and go on to the championship game, this will be the third championship game in those first six years for Mike Stoops. Down the middle of Bradley for Bob Stoops. Down to the 32-yard line. Let's find out what's going on in Hattiesburg. Something else. Wow. That's a tough place to play, that's for sure. A lot of people have found that out over the years. Adrian Peterson, draw play, broke one tackle, two tackles, three and more. Off to the races is Peterson. He might get there. Touchdown. Touchdown. What a run. I think he breaks at least five tackles. He's not too special, is he? Wow. That was something. On third and 18, 20 yards for his third touchdown. You said earlier he's carried the ball more than anybody in college football. And he still doesn't get hurt. He doesn't get injuries. The oranges are flying in. That's not going to be a good thing because they're going to have to hold up play. And the Sooners are trying to tell their fans, we appreciate it, but keep the fruit to yourself for now. That one's juice right there. Now you don't want to get a penalty called on you. They're making an announcement with the PA right now. You can get an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on your on your fans. And so that guy's going to have a whole bag of oranges. None of them are going to be too tasty. Most of them have some of that painted grass on them. But Peterson just painted a perfect picture for us on that touchdown run that we'll see again after the extra point. And the extra point up. And good. 42 to 3. Now you talk about impressing the bowl championship series people this is pretty impressive talk about
about teamwork and the offensive line a lot. Watch these two offensive linemen, the center Carter and the left guard, as they're going to block the, the linebacker and the nose tackle. Watch as they come off the ball. Now see the team block right there. The center comes off and picks off the linebacker while the guard continues blocking the nose tackle. One missed tackle, two missed tackles, three, four, five. And then six at the goal line. But the offensive line, you just don't get that teamwork by just playing together for a couple of games or a year. As I mentioned earlier, those guys along the line average 37 starts in their career for that Oklahoma offensive line. You know, you start thinking about Adrian Peterson and the fact that he's got 172 yards and three touchdowns, and we talked about Reggie Bush a little bit earlier and how explosive he is and uh, lightning, as he's called out there, and that thunder and lightning thing with Lindell White. Those two guys, I don't think, I personally don't think either one would win the Heisman Trophy this year, but don't you think they'd be the two front runners next year? Oh, for sure. For sure. And, 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 and if you get the more time Bush touches the ball, the more exciting he could be. I mean, and, and right now when they use it and they don't get him the ball, I'm sure he's a big decoy. And when you think about Oklahoma next year when they won't have Jason White at quarterback, how much more they'll probably lean on number 28. He'll carry it even more than he has this year. But, probably. And he may not be as good because that line you're he's going to lose three of three fifths of that offensive line and he won't have the passing threat. Yeah. The, 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 the quarterback uh, next year will be a, a, a battle between Tom Grady and uh, Ben Bomar, a true freshman. And we're going to see. Looks like Grady's going in. Grady, uh, Grady, yeah, Grady's warming up. And there's Bomar. Yeah, he was a hot shot uh, top quarterback in the country out of uh, Texas this year. Platt trying to air it out down the sideline, just overshot his intended receiver. Little Hales was out there with 11-11 going. Let's get another. Well, the Golden Bears of Cal looks like it's going to be a 10 and one season. If they can hold on the next four minutes. North to punt. Perkins runs up on it and takes it and immediately is going to be driven to the turf. A loss of a couple after he caught it. So we'll have a new quarterback for OU. Uh, wait a minute, we got a flag at midfield. With 11 minutes remaining in the ball game, didn't see that until the very last moment. Here's a call. After the play had ended, personal foul number 36. Oklahoma, late hit, 15 yards, first down. I don't think uh, Bob Stoops agrees with this one. He agreed with the officials the last time. I don't think he's buying that one. At any rate. He can afford it, I guess. His team is in command with 11 minutes to play. Holiday season in Kansas City, and downtown Kansas City does it upright with the lights. Beautiful place. Picture-perfect night we've had. Getting a little cooler, and it certainly never warmed up for Colorado. They have 420 less yards than Oklahoma does. Tommy Grady in at quarterback. Whistles blow this one dead before it ever gets going. The penalty before the timeout that we showed you, and Bob Stoops was upset with the officials. We're going to look at it here at the end of this right play. There, 36. That was on Russell Dennison. And that was a good call. That was a hit from behind. And we saw the middle linebacker dies on the sensational freshman linebacker being helped to the locker room. And off the field, and obviously in some pain. Brad, they're going to uh, check his uh, neck and his shoulder out. out. Uh, he, he has feeling up there, but uh, the indication is it's a neck injury, so they're going to be very careful of him and get some x-rays up there. Yeah, you could see him swatting as they were walking him off. He was yeah. not moving his upper well, torso any more than he had to, other than the, just to walk The positive away. thing, the good thing, is that he was walking off the field. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they weren't carrying him off. Here's he, the guy Bob talked about. He's only... A, had 11 pass attempts. Tommy Grady. Tommy, a redshirt freshman out of California. Big, tall guy, 6'6". Six, six, about 220. Yeah, and the, the, the third, only his third appearance of the year. Omar, right there with his cap on, has not been in a game all year. So it'll be between those two guys probably for White's job. And a good note, a uh, happy note for the rest of the, uh, the Big 12 that uh, <laughs> Oklahoma is going to lose like 16 guys. This is uh, probably Oklahoma's last best chance 
at winning a national championship because they lose eight guys off of their offense. They lose uh, seven guys off of their defense plus their punter. Jason Dunn for the night, 22 out of 29, 254 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, both on which his receivers, his intended receivers, slipped. So though they were turnovers, they certainly uh, were not the kind that would be his fault. Let me ask you a question. You think that the fact that he's won a Heisman Trophy and that he's 24 years old will have a negative impact on people voting for him or a positive impact? I think or a little bit as Grady goes back and throws complete to his tight end, Joe and John Finley. I would say the biggest problem that he might have is the perception of the last two games of last year yes. not what he's done this year which I don't think is fair either he's had a great year yeah that the fact that that a lot of people already voted last right. year and then he had a bad game in this game and a bad one right. in the championship game yeah and this certainly wasn't a bad game but the two interceptions if people don't watch this game yeah. they're going to wake up and look in the paper tomorrow morning and go okay we yeah. threw a couple interceptions no those interceptions were not his fault Ferguson to punt as we said, Robinson very rarely calls for a fair catch. He's back near his own 25-yard line. Might have to take this one on a hop. And does on the run at the 32. And only got to about the 35. And another flag flies in. Been a busy officiating crew tonight. I'll give them that much. Well, not only are these the two best teams in the conference representing their individual divisions. Incidental face mask on the, on the defense, five yards, first down. But these officiating crews are graded all year long in the Big 12, and so John Bible and his crew are awarded this game for on merit for what they've done all season. Timeout with nine minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the ball game, a ball game that is being dominated by the Sooners of Oklahoma who want to go to Miami. Oklahoma sideline. Vince Carter, number 50. He's a good one, too. Here's a throw. Out across the 40. Blake Mackey, his second catch of the night, only about Pass a three yard Mackey. pickup, though, and we'll work our way under nine minutes. He was tackled. Well, Jason Mike's White's line. night's done. Matt Leinert's night's done. Adrian Peterson's night, more than likely done. Let's see. Cedric Benson's week and season, regular season's already over. Alex Smith, John was talking about all the guys that uh, you would think might be in New York as finalists for the Heisman Trophy. Cal apparently has just beaten Southern Miss. It is a final now. They beat him by 10. Here's a tip ball incomplete. And it's <laughs> Lawrence Dampier again that got a hand on it. Number 74. Talk about Heisman hopefuls. You think about Reggie Bush sensational today. Matt Leinert, though, is his quarterback, and he's the leader. Smith's been brilliant for Utah. Jason White, 33 more touchdown passes. Adrian Peterson, huge numbers. And Cedric Benson down at Texas. Now, when you look east of the Mississippi, Kyle Orton early in the season was considered a candidate. So was David Green at Georgia and Braylon Edwards from Michigan. I think you can scratch everything east of your river there, Bob. I think the Mississippi's there. The only one that is still alive is, is that one. Uh, and, and I think he's fading. So you got all the all the viable candidates are west of the Mississippi. Flat. Oh, nice catch over the middle by Montaigne. Pass to Ron Montaigne. Tackle by Zach Latimer. Latimer with the tackle. Long night for Joel Platt. That's for sure. Fourth down. There'll be better days, Joel. Putting time again. How many times has this young fella putted? <laughs> Nine times. Ninth one coming. On a fourth down. And four. Long spiral. Too long. Into the end zone for the touchback. 55-yard punt again. So Oklahoma will have the ball and a huge lead and only 7.38 remaining before a perfect season.
So the Sooners with a big lead and only seven and a half minutes before they finish 12 and 0. A lot of their backups in right now. Getting some time. That's Dante Hickson on the carry is the night for Adrian Peterson and Kiwan Jones done. We talked about uh, the Heisman possibilities and uh, the map and you kind of wonder with all the voters where they all come from. And it's cut up by regions and each has 16 percent. One fan vote and there's there's a Heisman voter too but as we said. Jason White says I'll never vote for myself but I might yeah. vote for my teammate. <laughs> Seems like the only thing west of the Mississippi there's only two regions west of the Mississippi that's like 35 36 percent of the voters and the rest of the voters you remember remember how many years of the Heisman voting they used to talk about the eastern vote right the eastern Mississippi of the Mississippi where are all those votes going to go this year. And the other thing is, up until Carson Palmer won it, there was always a perception they had gone so many years without, I think it was Marcus Allen, the last one that came from the West Coast, that those games that a lot of times are played later at night and a lot of people don't get a chance to see. But I think in this day and age of uh, Sports Center and uh, yeah. ball games and highlights, yeah. you can see at least the good parts of people. But yeah. sometimes, unless you see a game like this and you're looking at Jason White, you would think that he threw two interceptions and it were really on things that would never have happened probably had his receivers not slipped. So those were all those things add up sometimes and uh, Bob and Lynn and I are all voters and the deadline is this Wednesday. I've got mine in my bag. I got my uh, my little overnight package there and I'm going to do it tomorrow. I had to wait until I saw everything. Well, I'm going to go home and do mine on the internet because you can do it by internet. That's how I did last year because I almost forgot because I had a basketball game stuffed in there and I said, oh my goodness, yeah. I got to get this baby in. So yeah. I did it on the internet. And of course, I already voted because I don't believe that every conference has a playoff game. So therefore, the conference game shouldn't count towards the Heisman Trophy yeah, vote. See, everybody's got their own so, thoughts. Plus, plus another thing on that ballot people should realize is there's a vote for first, second, and third place. Mm -hmm. So many points are first, second, and third. And in a close race where you've got guys like White and Peterson, you've got Bush and Lyon all at the same school, somehow that vote's going to get split up. So that second and third place vote becomes extremely important at the tally at the end, at the end of this uh, vote. What was the closest one? Was it not Bo Jackson and Chuck Long? And Chuck, of course, here is, we mentioned, the offensive coordinator the, for the Sooners. He's in the next booth, yeah. He's in the next booth. And of course, Heisman guys that uh, want it, Archie Griffin being the only two-time winner. I think everybody knows that. That's a college football fan. But there have been other juniors that have won and then come back and how they've finished. And uh, Doc Blanchard did a good job uh, finishing second. Archie Griffin, of course, came back. Doug Walker, his teammate, did it and then came back third as you see the top two there. Uh, Billy Sims finished second after winning on Heisman. And Ty Detmer at BYU finished third. So uh -huh. Jason White win it. Win, uh, winner of the Heisman last year. And he'll be in the mix. I think there's no doubt about that. I think I think the favorites are probably him and Matt Leinart because of the fact that Peterson is a true freshman. He's going to get a lot of votes but I don't think he'll get enough. But I think the two quarterbacks I think Alex Smith at Utah probably hasn't gotten enough exposure. Yep. I think that's being out where he is. Uh, we don't think a lot of enough of the Eastern voters have seen him. Well we'll know tomorrow when John and Craig and Aaron officially have the BCS selection show at five o'clock Eastern on ABC. But if it's this team and Swanee's alma mater from USC there's a pretty good chance we'll have the Heisman Trophy winner and the Heisman runner up playing against each other. Uh huh. And Cedric Benson had what a great career he's had. Absolutely. At, at, at Texas. Uh, a stellar career. Those are just guesses and speculation on our part but that would be some kind of lineup to have a Heisman winner and a runner up guy. <laughs> Matt Leonard and Jason White coming into today their numbers were almost identical. One two fifty a game one at two forty six. You see the touchdown to interception ratio thirty to four for Jason and Matt twenty eight to five. Now if you're looking for differences Matt Leinart is 21. Jason White is 24. 
White came back to an offense that was solid. Offensive line receivers. Matt Leinart came back to an offense that offensive linemen had, had to repair an offensive line. Wide receivers were, you know, Mike Williams was left. Steve yep. Smith got hurt. McFoy got hurt. A bunch of his receivers. So he had to do a little bit more. But uh, that doesn't take anything away from what Jason White has done. He looks like a man among boys. And he has played well I'm all year. Pride and joy of Tuttle, Oklahoma. They got Jason's name painted up there on the water tower in Tuttle. Told his mom back when he was a kid, he said, someday I'm going to have my name on that water tower, Mom, because they just painted it white. And he meant going up there with a can of spray paint with his buddies. And instead, it now says, Jason White, home of the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> I like that. I like <laughs> the, that. the town did it for him. He didn't have to go up there and sneak like up that. there. Yeah. Let's give a shout out to Tony Casillas, uh, Brad. Uh, Oklahoma middle guard of uh, 82 to 85, going into the... Uh, College Football Hall of Fame. They have a dinner in New York next Tuesday. It's the 47th annual awards me, dinner me, me, at the, at the uh, Waldorf, and uh, he's going to be there along with uh, Jim Mandich from Michigan. Frank Emanuel, remember Frank yeah. Emanuel from Tennessee? Good for Mad Dog. He's going in there, huh? Yeah. It's good. Ray Guy's going in. Uh, Joe Cap. Defense offside. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Uh, Pacific Life game summary. Adrian Peterson, two, uh, three touchdown runs tonight. They've done it by ground and by air. He ended up with 172 yards and three scores. This one, one of the greater runs you'll see all year. Breaking six tackles. The last one at the goal line with a stiff arm and showing his speed in the process. Quite a night for the youngster. And he's something special and something to watch. Down to a minute 43. And Oklahoma Sooners. A big story tonight, but there have been big stories this week, of course. Changes in coaches. Ty Willingham out. Everybody thought Urban Meyer would go there. Instead, he's on his way to Florida. Pretty good jobs uh, opening. Uh, Notre Dame, Washington, Stanford, Illinois, Old Miss. I think there's more of this. I think we got two pages of. Uh, job openings. I think there were 16 before Skip Holtz took the East Carolina job. And of course a lot of question marks out there still. BYU is open. Norm Chow the offensive coordinator for USC. Is offense five yards fourth down. One of the guys that's being uh, talked about for there's, several different jobs. There's Joe Castiglione just giving a hug to his head coach, Joe, the Bobby Dodd athletic director uh -huh. of the year. So not only do they have a good football coach yep. and a good basketball coach and a good women's basketball coach, they got a good AD running the whole show. Yeah, congratulations to Joe. And Joe has said if anybody else comes around hunting for Bob Stoops, anything that needs to be done contractually will be done to make sure he doesn't leave Norman. Yeah. Here's a punt. And it's going to be down to Ed. Right about the 16 yard line and Bob just got wet now he can smile because he knows like he did four years ago. It's his third appearance in the national championship game yep. in his first six years at Oklahoma. What a great job he's done. Super. Also want to congratulate Lavelle Edwards and George Welsh. They're going into the College Football Hall of Fame also. Joe Caracone's our technical manager. Jenny McIver, our production manager. Tom Wicks and Julie Norman, our production assistants. Neil Gallo's our associate director. Matt Marvin, associate producer. Technical director, Brad Rowe. Our game directed by Patrick McManus and produced by Bruce Clark. Bob Goodrich, our coordinating producer of college football. Senior producer is Bob Toms. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Mike Pearl. And the president of ESPN and ABC's George Bordenheimer. A lot of other folks that helped us out. By Darian Lee. Kay Schumacher running our great stats down there. Anthony Holman on our computer stats. Clint Dean's our spotter. Scoreboard operator Paul Barnes. Stage manager Mike Locker. All the folks that uh, are with us all year long will be with us again in the Orange Bowl where we're going to see this team. I'm pretty darn sure. Aren't you, Bob? Yeah, you know. 
Tommy Tuberville and, and Auburn had a great year, and there's no doubt about it, but, but there's three undefeated teams at the end of the year, and the rules were set ahead of time, and it's just too bad that uh, somebody's gonna get shut out, but the BCS was designed to get the top two teams in the voting. We did the human polls, you did the coaches, you did the media, and you did the, uh, the, the computer polls, and this is the rules set out, and, and, and it looks as though USC and Oklahoma are going to be the two top teams and those ones playing in the game. Well, this, of all the games today, and everybody expected that the North champion maybe wouldn't give enough of a fight to the winner of the South Oklahoma. But this, as far as the highly ranked team playing in either a final game or for a conference championship, has been the most impressive. Oklahoma's defense really didn't give up anything. It was interception that was run back down and they finally got a field goal Colorado to get off but it uh, could have easily been 42 to nothing or 48 to nothing and the party starting now and here come the oranges again as the Dr. Pepper Big 12 champions the Sooners of Oklahoma again. Gary Barnett Bob Stoops meet at midfield. And Coach Stoops has got his team in championship contention again. So 12 and 0 for the Sooners. 19th undefeated regular season. And three of those under Bob Stoops. And Swannies with a head coach of the Sooners. Well, Bob, first of all, congratulations, Big 12 Championship. Oh, thank you, Lane. It is special. Uh, these don't, you know, they're, they're not easy to get. And uh, proud of our player assistant coaches did an excellent job. So uh, really proud of the team. You know, you had a mile this year. It said simply finish. And you came into this ball game, and, and a lot of players wanted to make up for what they did, didn't do last year. You did that dominating style this evening. They, they came out ready to play. They had an edge to them all week, you can tell. And uh, fortunately, we came out here and played that way. Uh, Colorado's a good football team and, uh, and, and fought their way here, but really proud of our guys, the, the edge that they had and the way they played tonight. You always are looking to make your team better. What about this ball game tonight when you go back and you look at film, you say, okay, we need to work on, we got to get ready or correct come the Orange Bowl. Real simple, those penalties you talked to me about at halftime, we had more of them in the second half, so we're, we're smarter than that, and hopefully, we're, you know, we, we made some foolish penalties, but we'll, we'll get that corrected. Coach, congratulations on the Thank season. You, we'll Appreciate see you one more time. All right, thanks. There's the winning coach. Players that were special tonight are Chevrolet players in the game. Thaddeus Washington from Colorado, the outside linebacker, involved in a lot of tackles for a busy buff defense tonight. And Adrian Peterson of Oklahoma, though Jason White had a huge game, so did the freshman with three touchdowns to tie a career high. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Happy bunch of Sooners. They are 12-0. <laughs> that makes it special, doesn't it? The championship caps of the conference. Now they want a big ring from Miami. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Be sure to join us tomorrow. Again, the BCS matchups will be selected on the Tostitos BCS Selection Show. Then on Monday at 9, Al Michaels and John Madden will bring you the Cowboys against the Seahawks on Monday Night Football. Right now from Kansas City, for Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, Brad Nessler saying so long. The Sooners win it 42-3. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television.